really quick. Um, all the way on the right, we have Yellow Bus. Woo! Take a look at his picture. He's getting a beer bukkake. Beer bukkake. Beer bukkake. Me. Uh, Sean Shank. What is your What does your thing say? Sorry for what? No, no, no. On your beer. Oh, my beer. It says Macho Law prohibits me from admitting I'm wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, Jim's Nerd Nation, hobos and hand grenades, which we could all use more of. So we were just talking about Xbox One, which I don't know anything about, but I think the last comment, what someone said that who showed the games and who who didn't show games, what was that about? Play, PlayStation PlayStation 4 showed the games, Xbox showed the system, and PlayStation didn't. It was ridiculous. I mean, in my eyes, it was ridiculous. No, I mean, I guess at E3, everybody's going to show everything, which I think E3 is next week, but uh, I don't know. Xbox, you know, really focused on uh, the... Uh, the games, and I mean, focused on just with the look of the system, the new Connect, and they focused on a lot of uh, the interaction with the Connect. Well, PlayStation. What's the, focused what's on the look game. of the system? 1980s VCR. That's it, really, it looks like, like a fucking VCR. VCR. Fashion has. <laughs> yeah, kind of, but I mean, honestly, who cares? I mean, it's not like though. you're displaying it for to have people come over and go, "Wow, that looks awesome." You know what I mean? Who really comes? I mean, mine's hidden away in my entertainment center anyway. It could be in the shape of a dildo, and I would. Yeah. You know, matter of fact, I don't really care. Away, you know that way. So. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. We are live, so. I, oh. I clicked on. Uh, I clicked on it, so it looks like we're good. Good to go. Unless I'm mistaken. No, I don't think you're mistaken. I'm and sure. And there's the silence. I clicked on the link post, and it saw though. it, and I was all excited. It's not a post. What's that? Face Facebook still don't let you post though. Oh. I just no, heard no, I have no, like no. a separate window open with Fuck the uh, the stream, and then like I started hearing double of my voice back, and like freaked me out. For That's a what happened to me because I clicked the link, and then I heard the intros again, and I was like, "What the fuck? We're past intros. What's going on?" <laughs> yeah. like, Seriously, man, I was like, "I did way too many drugs back in the like last week." <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know what you guys said in the interim while I had my headphones off, but I, I don't really care what the Xbox One looks like. I think it's just funny that you see all these concept systems like. When people were speculating, it looks all futuristic and shit, and then it's like this, like <laughs> this big fucking box. It's but just thing, yeah. I, I, maybe I'm just a little picky, but like Xbox One, what the where the fuck did that come out? Like left field. Like all the speculative names were way cooler. Like I guess the project name for it while they're working out was like the Durango. Was Durango, the Durango yeah. is cooler than one. Like. I yeah, you know, but you know, next, you know, the next one will be Xbox Two. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I think that they're going for because they had the Xbox, and then they went with the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and then everybody was like, "It's going to be the Xbox Seven Hundred and Twenty. It's going to be the Xbox Next, the Durango, all these other sort of things." And those all may have been great things, but whatever genius in branding and marketing decided, you know what? Let's just call this the Xbox One. You know what I mean? And then we can go and brand it and market it as the one and only thing you need in, in your, you know, the one or, entertainment. You know, no, I believe that's what they're all I think that's what they're focusing. Over. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, that that was that was what I thought. But like I said, though, you know, no, notoriously, see, as far as uh, and and in the past, consoles have always been announced at E three anyway. I don't know, you know, how much knowledge and background knowledge everybody has, but home gaming consoles, for the most part, to my knowledge, over the last twenty years, have always been announced at E three, uh, which takes place sometime in June, first or second week of June, I think. It's it's right around the corner. But because of Microsoft and uh, and Sony, you know, obviously having new systems coming out uh, both this year, they wanted to, they didn't want to steal the spotlight from each other. So they kind of held their own, you know, their own things at two separate times or whatever. But um, you know, as I said, and we were talking before, you know, that the PS4 didn't talk a whole lot about the hardware of the system and, and the things that, that the system itself would be able to do. It talked about some of the games, and the reason I think they did that is because with the PS3. They, other than their exclusives, they really weren't, you know, I mean, if you were going to play a game on either system because it was on both, you were going to play it on the Xbox just because, uh, you know, all your, all your friends were on, on the Xbox, uh, you know, just the way the headsets work, the connectivity, the online, I mean, everything was, was, was much smoother. And they ran better from what I understand. Games always ran just, even if it was a little bit, just a little bit better. Yeah, on even, even though the PS3 was more powerful, but the PS3 was not very developer friendly, so it was very difficult to encode on and, and everything else. So... Um, you know, where I suppose the Xbox was very, you know, very developer friendly and that, and, and that sort of thing. So I think that the PS4 is doing the right thing, you know, because they, they don't want to have the debacle that the PS3 was. You know, they want to come out of the gate strong. They want to show they've got exclusive titles. Uh, they've got Bungie that's putting out that Destiny yeah. game. They want to show some some really some really strong software. I think. I just read that today. I didn't know that Destiny is is it exclusive for the PS4? No, it's it's no. going to be for both. Though the 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 reason why they were talking about it is because it. Halo, that was Bungie, used to be exclusive to Xbox. So now right. that it's on both platforms, 
they pretty much said Halo was the only thing that kept Xbox alive until Gears of War. Well, and that's because I mean Microsoft uh, actually owned you know Bungie, and Bungie wound up going and basically fighting to have their own you know their freedom so to speak, and, and to go off and do their own thing several years ago. But yeah, that was you know they were the uh, you know the exclusive you know they, they, everything that they did, which was obviously Halo uh, based you know franchise was all you know Microsoft exclusive. But but then as far as the Xbox you know goes, they they did a presentation that really centered around you know this thing being the the one piece of equipment that you would need. You know, and and whether it's three hundred or five hundred or six hundred dollars, if I don't have to have a Blu-ray player and I don't have to have uh, a separate box, you know, these different, uh, you know, like the Apple TV boxes, sling boxes, those sort of things. If you want to do away with cable, you can have these things. It's basically like a set-top box. I mean, I, I would be surprised uh, if they, if it doesn't have some type of DVR uh, recording built into it as well. You know, yeah, I think we really does. talked about that. Yeah, because it really seems like that's what they're what they're going for. You know, and um. And I mean, and that's and that's that's fine by me because if you think about I think it, that's cool. I just, several other I guess, items that you normally would have cluttering up your uh, entertainment center. I guess I just don't understand why they went with one because then the next system is going to be two. Like I get that one is like the, the idea that it's going to be this one entertainment center, but isn't that sort of implied? Because that's sort of where systems almost are now, and that's what everyone's looking for. So I don't know that it was a necessary marketing move to. To market it as one, Pro- probably not. But I mean, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things, you know, they're superfluous they, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And, and, Inconsequential and the, babble. And the bottom line is, is that you know, six months after it launches, as long as the thing isn't crashing and overheating like the Xbox 360 did <laughs> and, and blowing up with red rings of death or whatever, you know, and uh, and there's good there's good games coming out for it. And nobody's gonna care. You know what I mean? It could be called right, the yeah. Xbox piece of shit, and nobody would care. You know what I mean? It <laughs> That'd be a would. great name. Be like, Seriously, I'll come over and play some piece of shit. Yeah, it's great. Fucking come on, mine. <laughs> you know? so well, another great. thing. Another thing too. I mean, it it took six years for the 360 to become obsolete, and you know it doesn't mean that it's going to be. You know, they're going to still be used for the next three years. But I'm saying. You know, if a generation of uh, consoles now six years, I mean, the Xbox One might just be the indefinite thing that you know you can keep throwing shit into it, and it's just another computer. Well, keep upgrading it, yeah. Five or so six years is, is, the, is the typical uh, typical cycle. Look, Tim, uh, the the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty came out in uh, two thousand five, and uh, in two thousand six was the uh, the PS Three and the Wii launch. So we're we're in year eight here. Right I think yeah, Xbox. I think they oh, yeah. Well, they six say for, they, six for PS3. I apologize. It's eight for Xbox. It beca- I just know because I've been reading everywhere about how you know the typical life cycle is usually five to six years max, and uh, and you know and but Xbox has stayed relevant because of the constant system and dashboard updates that they've been able to you know to uh, to roll out. Well, that's the thing is technology is getting to that place now where it's upgradable, you know, and especially with online and shit now. I mean, look how far the Xbox 360 came, and so you might be right. Maybe, maybe with the Xbox One and these next gen. Was that me? Mm. <laughs> I think oh, your pizza's no, ready. No, that, that was Dad and his breathing machine. Uh, oh, <laughs> I thought it, it makes this loud thing, man. Like the first couple of times he did it, like I was upstairs and I was like, "What the hell? Are we under attack?" So, Turkey's done. It was uh, so bad. I was like, "Courage, leave the oven on." But so. uh, but yeah, maybe it'll be like a matter two of like maybe at that crossroads for the next for the next next gen consoles when that time comes. Instead of doing a whole new console, maybe it'll just be like a. Hey, bring your system in, and we put in a new graphics card and processor. Like maybe it's a cheaper, more efficient process somehow, just to update the original no, hardware. No, they'll, they'll never do that because they can't make the money. Well, it, well, and, and well, that, maybe they well, could make more money somehow if they were not paying to reproduce shells, and they could just replace the hardware. Yeah. Well, and and and, and Sean, what when you say that that's not true at all. They they actually lose money on the consoles <laughs> for the first two to five years, depending on how many they sell, just because of the hundreds of millions of dollars for development. It's sort of like cell phones, else, right? So. It really is where they're making money is the exclusive titles, the software, the accessories, the Xbox Live, those sort of things, the the arcade titles. That that's where they're really you know rolling in uh, you know a lot of a lot of cash on and that. But um, the funny thing is everybody talks about you know the next gen systems and everything else. And I I've seen three or four games just this year that I looked at and said, wow, those that's the best looking game I've ever played. Um, you know, Halo 4 was one of them, you know, where the graphics were just like, holy shit, you know. So, I mean, other than maybe cutting down some loading times and some other things and whatnot, I, you know, I, I don't know that it's going to be that huge of a jump anyway. I mean, usually it takes a couple of years uh, to really see the full potential of a new system anyway, but to tell you the truth, I, you know, I'm one of the few, like, I guess I'm in the minority, I'm not complaining needing a new system, you know. <laughs> so, to me, it's just going to be a, another expense to have to replace something that's already working just fine, you know. But, you know, really... 
what's going <laughs> to suck about the, the, the Xbox One is uh, they're going the Apple route and they're doing all your, all your headsets for the Xbox 360 are obsolete. You're not going to be able to use them with the Xbox One, which is only the ones only the ones that plug in because it has a different jack. But the actual uh, Bluetooth wireless headsets will still will still right. run. It's still Bluetooth. I mean, it's yeah, going to run. Yeah, because they're going they're going the way of Apple. They want to own the rights to the the jack so that they can go ahead and make money off of you know say Turtle Beach. They're working exclusively. I know right now with Turtle Beach, and that they can get part of the profits because they're going to own the jack. Kind of like you know Apple owns the charger. Apple's the only one you know they. Yeah. Own the, and, and yeah, and because I, I and I had uh, I, I had read or heard that as well, and um, I mean I'm I'm not too worried about it only because of the fact that like I said we don't use any of the uh, the wired you know old uh, headphones uh, anymore or whatever for the the headsets you know we have a couple of wireless Bluetooth ones in the Turtle Beach so and and hopefully those ones will be okay too but uh, you know but I, but I can't blame them for doing that I mean you know it's a business they're they're out to make money so. You know, it's not. It just uh, sucks for like you know for guys like Sean and I who have only recently got headsets, you know, and like dropped 150 bucks, and then it's like we're going to fucking do that again, you know. Exactly. Yeah, that's well, so you probably won't get it for another though. year and a half, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. The, the, only, the only headsets that don't work are the. Oh, you're talking about? You mean for your uh, all for the chat portion of it? I thought you. Were, I thought you were saying. Do no, I the misunderstand? The only, I thought, the only I thought thing they're my changing is, won't work. No, the only thing they're changing is the jack on the controller. So, so Woody oh. and his Woody and his video about proprietary stuff. It's all just speculation. It's not fact. There's a different jack on it because video, because they want to. Um, I would say I had seen it the other day, and then I had read something as well. Basically, when you have a, a set of Turtle Beach, anything that runs off Bluetooth, like I have a small Bluetooth one, you know, that you just or put over here. That that well, that one works fine, and the Turtle Beaches will work fine as well too. You're going to wind up having to buy a new cord with the, with the cord that actually does the chat that goes from the uh, you know the actual headset itself to the the controller because they they're changing the controller port on it so they can keep Here. it. But there but but there's no way that they're just going to have everything be obsolete. They're going to have a ten dollar cord that you're going to wind up buying so you an can adapter. still keep your yeah an adapter piece. You know what I mean? And then don't get me wrong, anything new that comes out from there, yeah, it's all going to have their proprietary right. you know jack or whatever the case is. So they, see, I'm surprised that that they even had a need to do that because their jack already is like a .07 millimeter instead of the standard .09 or whatever. Which is like already unusual. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. I it's already very obscure to where it's really difficult yeah. to find an adapter. I had to go to Radio Shack for an adapter once for one of them, or for whatever reason. But it's like it's like point oh two millimeters smaller than like a standard headphone jack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I remember that because when I was uh, before I went and got a headset to to do the podcast and everything, I remember I had plugged in my uh, Turtle Beaches and tried to see and the jack didn't fit into my computer, so it's not a standard one. Turtle so. Beaches. So it's already oh, not a standard one, but uh, but I'm excited though for E3 and to see some of the you know see some of the games, some of the software because you know like I said I'm I'm one of the the people that's kind of thinking you know okay do I do I really need a new system right now I mean there's still great games coming out games are looking good running good you know yeah yeah so. I mean I just out of like a money thing I probably will wait a little bit to get the next one just because I can't I can't afford 500 bucks whatever they're speculating it's going to be. Um, that's why I didn't get a 360 for a long time because I couldn't afford the 400 bucks. And in fact, to get my 360, I think, like Jordan, Jordan, our brother, for our viewers, um, uh, gave like 200 bucks, and then like Jamie petitioned all of our friends to like donate like 20 bucks yeah. here and there. That's how, that's how they got. Uh, that's how I got my like 360. And then we yeah. surprised you, and she like still like was short, I think, but she just was like, "Fuck it." <laughs> yeah, it it was awesome. It was like. Honestly, one of the one of the best gifts I ever got. And then actually, my my second Xbox, Jim Jim just like randomly surprised me with was like, here here's like the, the Gears of War special edition, like kick ass two controllers with the game included, like this yeah. thing, and this thing well, is so much bad, though, better. Because it's your like, Xbox wasn't working, so you know, yeah, I know how that red ring well, like, thing is. So it's 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 like almost I don't know I wouldn't say half the size, but it's significantly slimmer than my other one, and you can't even fucking hear it. Like there's yeah, a lot of times when I don't even know that it's one. on. I like the new one a lot. The yeah, only thing I don't like shit. about it is is um, I do and don't like Bumping is the, the stuff. Button. Yeah, remember <laughs> there was times when <laughs> we'd be oh, playing yeah, online with button. Yellow Bus. Yeah, it's just like a yeah, it's like a touchpad <laughs> yeah. thing or whatever. We'd be so. playing online with Yellow Bus like Call of Duty and like. <laughs> Tim would just randomly drop out, and then he'd come back on raging, screaming at the top of his lungs, <laughs> like my fucking toe bumped the goddamn button. And I was like, yeah, it's so I didn't, ridiculous, dude. No, it time, was no, it wasn't even. It wasn't the fact that it didn't like hit the off button. 
It's like, you know, the sensor is also for the open, so like my open. foot would barely touch the open and it would open in my game. <laughs> it just like, opens it. It, it, was it, just it, it was the best to hear you yeah, freak out, great. though, because I didn't understand because I didn't know they had those sensor buttons at the time, so I was like, dude, fucking watch your feet. Like, how are you getting fully pushing down a button? You know, but uh, I, I yeah. totally understand with these now because, you know, Brad is back there. Well, what I'm doing uh, to kind of see if I can save it, you know? What I'm trying to do is save money for this Xbox. Um, I'm actually going to cancel cable, which will save me like 90 bucks a month. And if yeah, I do it too. now, I'll probably have just enough money to buy it. And it'll be a Blu-ray player that I can my Xbox in the other room. So I'll have like two Xboxes, and I'll have like a Blu-ray player. I'll have all this, like, you know, Netflix, Redbox, Instant when it comes to it, and Hulu Plus and Amazon Instant Video. So you have like four different things to go off of for like 40 bucks a month. And it's still half of what you'd pay for a cable. Yeah, 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 that's 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 where I'm going too because uh, we sat down and uh, well, actually there's a, there's this box that you can buy. It's a DVR box and you can pick them up at like Walmart or Target or whatever. And I forget the name of it, but it's it's like eighty bucks. And it's a, it's a DVR uh, box and and I forget how many hours of programming it can hold. But it uh, it also you plug it into your normal cable jack and um, you don't pay for any service or anything like that. But you get your ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS, you know the the over air channels in HD. And then of course it has a DVR that you can record on it. But it also has uh, online connectivity, so you can. I mean, I, I have that on my TVs as well. But even if I didn't, this has you know uh, availability to go on to you know Amazon Prime, you know Hulu, Redbox, all that stuff. So that's what actually we're going to do. We're probably just going to pick up you know one or two of those to have to replace the actual cable boxes. You know, dump the cable. Period. Yeah. And, and just do that because the few shows that we watch. Um, you know, that are on, like, network television. We'll use the DVR to record those shows, and, and we'll still watch them. And then anything else, I mean, we'll get, we'll have the Hulu Plus. I'm enjoying having the Netflix, and, uh, you know, and, and if it's a day later or a week later or whenever they put it up, you know, we'll just watch shows like that. I mean, it's not... That's the thing is, like, it's all relative. Deal. Like, you know, like, for instance, Jimmy and I are finishing Lost, which happened in 2004. I think it Holy ended in 2010. So long. But, like, the thing is, though, is it's totally relevant to us because we never watched it, so what's oh, the wow. difference? Like, I... Uh, yeah, who cares and, when you and watch my thing it, right? is, too, is, like, I'm not really big into jumping on bag wagons when they're, like, they're really present. I think, like, watching Walking Dead is probably the only thing, like, I don't know, that's, like, got pop culture status that, like, I'm into at the same time as everyone else. I yeah, don't it's do a that fun bandwagon, though. Yeah, it's a good one. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's almost better when they have, like, already, like, four seasons and you can just grind through them instead of being, like... I like that. I like that. Like, I almost think there should be a way to rate shows. I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. I was thinking about you, Jim. Um... Uh, when I was watching Lost and uh, the discussions we had about like how the writers strike and like you can tell we're over those contractual things. For our viewers who don't know, I guess Lost was only what scheduled for four seasons and they were forced to do another mm. two seasons. It was supposed uh, to be three and three. Uh, okay. and they so wound up extending it to six, but the writer right. strike happened I think towards the end of season three and then basically the writer said, Listen, man, we've got enough for like you know, two two full seasons worth of episodes. So then ABC came back to him and said, "Well, I'll tell you what. Instead of doing twenty four episodes a season for two seasons, stretch it out to three, but we'll only make you do sixteen per season." So they wound up doing the last three seasons stretched out, which is actually two seasons. They stretch it into three or whatever. Yeah, well, we we were talking about that. You mentioned like you could tell some episodes where there's a lot of filler, and like you you can see that watching it back to back. But the continuity of the show, being able to watch from beginning to end, is still pretty good. So I almost feel like there should be a, like a rating system for if you're watching a show week to week as to how good it is in terms of continuity and flow, and then like uh, one with adjusted variables if you get to watch it constantly all the way through. Because I think the show probably Im improves by like 10% by being able to watch it from beginning to end. Because if I had to wait for some of this shit, there's definitely some weeks in there where I'm like, yeah, that's total filler crap, you know? They just we're, randomly introduce characters. They're like, oh, you, we're just going to tie this guy in that you've never fucking yeah. seen before. And, and, and I want to... I want to go back and do that, too, because I jumped on that right at the end of the first season. Carrie got me into it, and we had just gotten a DVR box. They were, they were fairly new at the time. And uh, we watched, like, maybe the last five or six episodes of the season, and um, we were, oh, my God, what's in the hatch, blah, 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 and the long wait until season two. When uh, season one came out on DVD, uh, conveniently about two or three weeks before season two was, was airing on CBS or whatever that was, ABC, 
um, we picked it up and we watched it, you know, marathon style over the course of like a week, and it was really good. And, and, and I, I still enjoy that first season the best. And is it because I got to watch it all in one condensed, you know, period, or was it just because it was still new and fresh and Sawyer's yeah. comments were still witty and funny and Hurley was still fat and, you know, and funny and, you know, oh, those God. sort of things. And Kate wasn't annoying yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. But um, because then after that, we watched it from season two on, you know, week in, week out. And, I mean, we'd be pissed when they would leave you at a cliffhanger and then they'd be like, in four weeks. What the fuck? In four weeks? You know? Are you serious? You <laughs> after know? Dancing with and, the I mean, Stars. You'd, and you'd be, you'd be mad, you know? And, uh, and then, of course, when there was a writer's strike, they shortened the season. Yeah, that was the one season, I think, was shortened to 15 or 16 episodes, whatever it was. And you could tell that they were getting off the beaten path anyway, but it was one of those things where, at the end, I felt more confused than anything. And, and it may have been because there was that gap in between each episode. If I, right. so I, well, so I've been wanting you know, to go back and watch it all and see if maybe there is more things that are wrapped up that my memory just didn't, yeah. didn't grab a hold of, you know. Well, it's kind of the point now, too, with stuff where, like, you don't even have to delay things as long as, like, I did, you know, with, like, that many years between, like... A lot of shows now, you can go online and watch the episode on their website the next day without mm. cable. So to me, like, I'm like surprised that cable already isn't, like, the status of, like, where print is now. Like, newspapers, obviously, I, I think most people know that, you know, the print word is, is really, really suffering. And part of it has to do with this this inclination that we all feel that information should be free. Um, you know, because you can go online and find the same article for free. Why should you fucking pay for a paper subscription? But I'm surprised that cable's not there with it. Because at, like, I don't know many people aside from older generations that still have cable. Yeah, That's older like, older people are keeping it alive, you know, you know, because the people that don't know how to stream and don't know how to do it, and and honestly, the lower income families, you know, I'm not going to be racist here, but you know, a lot of the the, the Spanish and things like that, those families, some of them don't even have they, they if they're lucky they got a DSL connection, some of them don't even have internet. So they don't have that availability yeah. of being able you know to go on and watch or stream that show. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's the library? <laughs> yeah. What's the library? But you know, what I mean, though, so there's, you know, so you, you take for granted that, you know, you have high speed internet, but, you know, honestly, there's, and there's so many parts of the country, you know, when we lived out in Michigan, there was a couple of spots that we were actually lucky. We lived in a few different places when we were out there for the four or five years that we were, and we were lucky we were able to get, uh, Comcast was in two out of the three places we lived in, and the other place that we lived in, we had to use uh, dial up internet for, you know, for the <laughs> like year that we lived there. <laughs> yeah, it was it was winner, terrible. Winner, I mean, winner. it would take forever to log on, and then like, and then I was trying to like bid on things on like a Black Friday thing for Amazon or whatever. And by the time like I finally connected and logged in, it was like this item sold out. I'm like, there was ten thousand of them. What the fuck? It's That's three funny. minutes, you know. But it, it was terrible. That year was a was a, a just a terrible, terrible year for that because we had because we had satellite <laughs> you know for satellite TV and, uh, and 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 it was very windy in the area, so the satellite was really getting <laughs> fucked up and everything. You know, there was no signal. I'm out there in the middle of a windstorm with sleet blowing in my face on the top of the roof, trying not to kill myself. You know, trying to reposition the satellite and clear the ice off of it and. It was bad, bad news, man. That's but the, my point is, is that there's so many areas of the country that are like that. You know what I mean? There's, you know, you take for granted that, you know, we live in a major metropolitan area. You know, but there's well, a lot of It's funny, but like when I'm playing Black Ops and it shows who's online at the time and it shows like the globe, like Middle America is compl like desolate. There's no one. <laughs> there's no one in like the true like Midwest or whatever. Definitely like Africa. <laughs> like no one. Like, I love when you look at Africa. And there's like one guy in the middle of like Nugambi or whatever who's got a connection. Like, yeah. like, like who, it's probably some white dude on like a, in a Peace Corps who's got like a gaming laptop and a satellite card. Or you know? It's like or some like, fucking. It's some like oil tycoon's kid, some fucking prince Alhambra or something. You know, <laughs> sitting around playing with his buddies. <laughs> you know. I would like to just take a second and point out Sean's. Olive, olivey colored skin. What the hell? How the fuck did she get so tan so quick? Dude, it's a different background. I moved. Yeah, let's talk about that. Talk about Sean my move. move. Yeah, yeah, I moved. I moved on Monday. I like to move. I like <laughs> to move end. rather. I like <laughs> to move rather frequently so the cops can't track me. Well, that's good too. And then it, it <laughs> no keeps jersey. you off. Yeah, and then, and then it keeps you off of that uh, sex offenders registry too. I think for the the area and the neighborhood. Yeah. Now, do it they does. make you go house to house every time you move somewhere and like knock on doors and well, tell once, people or? Once they find me, I have to go knock house to house within a within a um, two two mile radius, and it usually takes about a year for me to do because I have no motivation, and I have to tell them I'm a registered sex offender. 
And uh, <laughs> that's got to you know, be a fun topic. It's, it, it's a good fun, time because everyone thinks that we're kidding, but Sean really is a registered sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> what really? <laughs> no. Uh, no. In, in Arizona, oh, if you like, pee, if you get caught peeing in public like three times, then they, they put you in the same boat. And they're like, he shows penis in public too much. Tim, did yeah. that happen to you? No, unfortunately, it did not. I, I had a friend was... who got two strikes. You peed on a bar once, though, like in public, right? And that's in Mexico. It doesn't count. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was in Mexico. Senor, why are you peeing? On? Get the fuck Here, out! Tell us, of tell us that story really quick. I haven't heard it in a long time. Oh, I mean, okay. So we went to my freshman year on spring break. Uh, I went down to Rocky Point, and you know, anyone that's been to Rocky Point knows about Baja and uh, that other shitty place. <laughs> but you go to Baja first because there's like <laughs> girls that are like topless and like there's like dollar penny drinks or whatever and they're really watered down so you're like I'll have eight shots and that's like equivalent to like one shot and so you order like 20 shots for yourself and there's just this, this horrible line it's just like a pit where people just pee all over each other practically anyway <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like fuck it it's a dark bar uh, I ordered like 20 shots and I was like pounding through them and I started peeing and like the, this little security guard like flashed me and like my friend was to the left. He's flashing like around my like my my dinghy like on the right. <laughs> my so dinghy? Like, oh, my six year old calls that his dinghy. <laughs> Alright, my big old dick. <laughs> but uh, so I'm like turning to the left. I'm like, oh man, I can't pee on my friend. That's just weird. And then I like was like, turn to the right, and so I'm like, oh, I can't turn to the right. So I just sat there and pissed, and just kind of stared at the guy. And he just was like, oh. And then like before I know it, I was like circled by three guys and kicked out. No one knew why until <laughs> there's only two bars. So like I had to go to the other bar and wait like literally like two hours. Everyone came. There's no cell phones by the way. So people were like. Mm-hmm. What the, the fuck other bar, all, all they like, had was a donkey show and all that other stuff. So, I mean, it was the uncomfortable. Yeah, right? Thing. So, was, I was the I'm second sitting there drinking by myself, and they finally come, and they're like, what happened? Only two of my ten friends knew what happened. They're like, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe what happened. You got caught like a flashlight with this dinghy out. <laughs> I just think it's funny that you went up to the bar, ordered some drinks, and then proceeded to piss on the bar, <laughs> like right there. That's just so funny. Hey, the funny thing is I got away with it three times. It was actually like the fourth time when they caught me. Oh really? I didn't even. I never knew that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I did it next night anyway. No fear. That's funny shit, dude. Uh, new topic. New topic. Sure. I or suppose. or we could exchange drunken stories if uh, if you guys have any. I have to think of one. But uh, you know what, Shank? That's I don't know if I've got any good drunken stories from you because I mean you're you have like a baseline drunk that you're sort of always at. Right. Exactly. Twenty four seven. See, but, okay, you say you don't drink hard liquor because it fucks you up. Do you have any stories where you had some hard liquor and shit got went south? Well, I don't think I, every, anything's ever went south. I just remember one time I was at a buddy's uh, surprise party, 30th surprise par- 30th birthday surprise party, and uh, I was with a female companion at the time. And, uh, wait, wait, wait is we, that a hooker? <laughs> that was a hooker, yeah. <laughs> okay. It was a hooker. Um, you know, I had to pay for her companionship. And I didn't care, you know, I knew we were going to drink, so, because we had, we rented a hotel, we got a hotel that, um, so no one had to drive, and um, I don't ever do hard liquor, I just drink beer, and normally that's all I drink, and, um, you know, I had, like, 300 bucks in my pocket, and for some reason I put, uh, I gave my credit card to the waitress and says, yeah, let me start a tab, and, um, that total mistake, all of a sudden we're, you know, I beer after beer after beer, which is fine, but then all of a sudden here starts coming shots of Jaeger, well, I don't do Jaeger. I think Ooh. Jaeger, you know, if I want to do Jaeger, I might as well just start fucking drinking cough syrup, in my opinion, because I fucking hate Jaeger. So we're just doing shot after shot after shot of Jaeger. And, um, you know, I woke up the next morning. My I could barely talk. My throat was just, like, swollen. My hand, <laughs> my hand was swollen and all bloody. And then I was naked in bed. So I have no idea what happened. I don't this is remember. what Sean was doing all night. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guys on each side. I that would explain the throat and the hands. <laughs> exactly. I supposedly went on stage to wish my buddy a happy 30th birthday, came off the stage and fell flat on my face. <laughs> and then when I woke up the next, when I got home the next day, I mean, I was hungover. I didn't end up throwing up, but I was hungover. I, uh, I went and I had the credit card bill that I signed for. That was for $400 in alcohol. Plus, oh, I, I, went, I, I went with $300 in cash, and I asked the girl I was with, I'm like, well, where's the money? She's like, oh, we spent that too. <laughs> Seven hundred. You broke ass fool. 
Seven hundred dollars. Dude, what the fuck? And I didn't even get a blowjob out of that. Seriously, Dude, that's, that's crazy. I can borderline black out for twenty bucks with a good pregame. <laughs> Well, right, yellow bus? I, mean, you, I mean, is that, that only, was, is that just me? Well, no, that was no, that was no. Me. I, I can get like a bottle of Everclear and make it a good time for eight bucks. But that was me, her, and then she kept buying drinks for like the birth, the, the guy's birthday it was, and his buddy, and we were just sitting there doing shots, and it was eight bucks a shot, so thirty-two bucks a time. Yeah, that and, shit adds up quick, man. We yeah. were talking about that when we were out a couple yeah. weeks ago having some beer, so that, that's happened to me a few times too, but. Uh, I uh, actually I picked up a bottle of that rum shada uh, stuff, that yeah, shada flavored uh, liquor, or whatever. And uh, it was funny because I'm, I'm up at the uh, the Binnies, and uh, I, you know I, I didn't know where it was, so I had I had to ask the guy, and the guy's like, "Hey, do you like French toast?" I don't know if it was like a trick question or if he was like, you know, he's a little queer or something like, like that. Like, 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 like fucking me slang for some kind of drug or some shit, man. It's like I've been out of the loop for a while, you know. So he's a younger, you know, fella. Anyway, but uh, so he's like, uh, he goes, no, no, man, seriously. He goes, you go and you take and, you know, throw about a shot or two of this in the batter for your French toast. And he goes, it's just fucking phenomenal, you know. So I'm like, that's great. I make breakfast, you know, on the weekends and everything. I'm I like, make oh, breakfast, I'll give, bro. I'll give, I'll give that a whirl, you know. So. So anyway, so we wound up having some left for the next morning, and I did. I, I made some with the French toast, and it's man, it's good. It's really good, you know. And the thing is, too, is a lot of people think like, oh, Jesus, you know, you got a family, you put liquor in there, that's just, you know, it, dude, it, 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 any, al- <laughs> any alcohol that you put in anything, if yeah, it burns it's off, off, once it hits 173 degrees, the alcohol burns mm-hmm. off anyway. So I mean, you yeah. could put like a fucking half a bottle of whiskey in anything and as long as you're cooking it for a while it cooks off you know so it's not like you're it's not like i'm giving it to the kids and they're fucking stumbling around the house you know but uh it was good though very tasty stuff a a word on on liquor and burning shit off i was obsessed for a long time with sunflower seeds in particular um the jim beam sunflower seeds so i'd get like a, a glass of 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 whiskey and i would just fucking eat like a whole bag of sunflower seeds and it says like on the bag you know it's like made with bourbon and all this shit. So I was, like, drunk and had some regular sunflower seeds. That's when I lived at the apartment. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I'll just, I'll make my own. So, like, I got, like, a like a silver saucer pan, like, put some whiskey in there Uh-oh. and just, like, let, let the sunflower seeds soak in there. And it was the worst thing ever. That's basically what it came down to. There was, like, waterlogged sunflower seeds. It tasted ter- absolutely terrible. Even after I dried them out, they were still, like, a little bit wet on the inside, and it just tasted like pure alcohol. So it's like clearly I don't have the roasting technique or whatever that these guys are doing, but uh, it did not make for a good experience. It's the conversation killer, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone, hey, you can't you can't win them all. It's What's kind of, the, it's, kind of, it's kind of like cooking with Tabasco. We were talking about this earlier. Who's ever cooked with Tabasco aside from me and Sean? Have you guys? I have. Oh yeah, love Tabasco. Oh, uh, but and, I mean, like uh, cooking sriracha. with Tabasco, like and sriracha is good too. But we were talking about like if if Tabasco ever hits a hot pan, it immediately smells like putrid vomit. There's nothing you can do. About it. <laughs> it is. It is. Never tried that. Yeah. Well, don't don't try it unless you want to vomit because like it's pots. it it you know it's great to put on almost anything, but when you, when it hits that hot spot, man, Jesus Christ, it's fucking game over. Like when we were talking about this in the pre-show, there's no other way to describe it aside from putrid vomit. Like, you know when you've thrown up so much that it's just stomach acid coming up? That's what it smells oh, like. Oh, man, I hate that. Yeah, that's the, fucking, that's the worst. It is. It's <laughs> awful. You know, you can enjoy Tabasco, and fucking that shit just will make you honestly want to just go fucking vomit. And, you know, any kind of any kind of dinner you're making, if it hits that pan, it's ruined. It's done. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Yellow Boss, I was going to say, what do you know about throwing up, man? You fucking almost never throw up when you drink. It's always the next day. Yeah, well, I mean... Get older, I do it more often. I actually have, I went and did a wedding this weekend. It was kind of funny. Um, I binge drank like all day Friday. When I say all day, I mean like since I landed at like 9 in the morning, then drove. Uh, it was in California, so we, we drove an hour uh, to where she lived from the airport. So I drank from like 9, 10 a.m. to 3 in the morning. And uh, the next morning, like I didn't even feel hungover. I just really needed to take a dump, <laughs> and so there's like this like really nice bathroom slash fitness center in the basement of the hotel. So I go down there, and like I take it, and it's one of those ones that like auto flush, so you can't like do any courtesy flushes. It's kind of awkward, but anyway, so I I finish it, and then I get up, and I'm like washing my hands, and then it just suddenly hits me. I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, when you're hungover, 
and you get like that kind of like I feel pale and you want to throw up. This was like a without warning, so I was like just sitting there and I was washing my hands. And I was like, and then I go and I like threw up like half my breakfast, which never happens. And so I really don't know what my body wants anymore. It used to be I never threw up. <laughs> then it's like the you know twelve o'clock, like just in time, like when the sun hits the, the highest in the sky. I just like get sick and like. Joe heard I get sick like, at high noon. <laughs> I do like I do like silent silent vomits, and then now it's just like random. It's just completely random. Dude, you're no so idea. lucky, like that you have the silent vomit. I have the most embarrassing vomit sounds because like I can't mm-hmm. control the dry heave, so it's just the loudest fucking most ongoing. Like Jamie, my wife will absolutely testify to, and like she condemns me for it too. I'm like I can't fucking help it. You think I want to sound like that? You think I want to sound like Wah! like I'm just like yelling at the top of my lungs? But, That's uh, what it sounds like, man. It's uh, it's, oh, truly, it's the worst. And it's I think truly horrifying, man. Like, yeah, we got it from someone in our family, probably our, I think mom. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just a terrible thing, and I can't control it. It's totally involuntary. But uh, yeah, Yellow Bus, you, you're you're definitely like the ninja puker. I remember that time at, at uh, <laughs> U of I visiting our friend Tom when you got like so drunk that you just had the constant spins, and you just went to like a blind rage and stormed out of the dorm room and started like pissing on furniture and like you, <laughs> the only way to make you happy was we got into this like study room and you found like someone's jacket and you're like I'm taking this I was like fucking take it let's let's go back to the room but then you were punching yeah, mirrors sense. and just shouting obscenities and, t- and Tom was like bro you gotta chill out I'm gonna fucking get in trouble here so <laughs> I'm test off. tomorrow I'm gonna test Jordan's tomorrow Jordan's apologizing for no reason yeah Jordan was like, yeah, that was an interesting night that was an interesting night for sure yeah. yeah, I've always been like a throw up the night of kind of guy. If I, if I do puke the next day, it's sort of like you though, where it's like it's always after I've had a meal and I don't expect it. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling pretty good now that I had that meal. I'm chilling out. I'm gonna go take a dump, and then it's like <laughs> it's something about the dump factor that makes you want. I don't know. Yeah. Just it's it's, it's it's the game changer, man. So then then with you, surf, it's like eight eight fifteen in the morning. Yeah, because your dumps are scheduled every fucking day. <laughs> they can be. I mean, they, they very frequently are. The other thing that I find with the dump correlation that's a little weird is if I've smoked too much pot. Have you ever smoked too much pot? Uh, uh, for anyone here who smoked pot, I know that Sean hasn't, but uh, I've not. But mm-hmm. if, if yeah, you ever smoke, smoke if you ever smoke so much that that uh, like uh, for me, if I if I over smoke, I'll get like pale, and I get like a little bit shaky, like I like because my blood sugar's low and yeah, I gotta eat something. <laughs> And one of two things happens. I either go to sleep, and I wake up fine, or I take the biggest dump ever, and then I feel fine. <laughs> it's like it's a weird thing. I call it getting the evil out, man, the next day after a good <laughs> night of drinking. Seriously, because like I just I feel like garbage, and I'll, sometimes I'll have a, just a terrible headache and whatever, and then all of a sudden I go and I just man, I get to take a nice shit. And I call it getting the evil out because it truly is. And I, I don't know about everybody else, but I feel better afterwards. Uh, a lot of times then I can, you know, I, feel I, I, can, I can eat, I can hold some food down. A lot of times the headache just dissipates and goes away. You know, I mean, I do. I just, I feel like a million bucks, you know. So it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, like a household term that we use around here because we don't get out much. So my wife and I often <laughs> evil we have a few drinks. We, we, we have a few drinks together, you know. And, um you know, uh, the next next morning, it's, you know, <laughs> she'll disappear for like a half an hour, you know, and she'll come back and have like a smirk on her face, you know, I'm like, oh, I get in the evil out. She's like, oh, yeah, twice. <laughs> it's like, all right. That's uh, funny. Whatever does it for you. So. <laughs> you know what just crossed my mind is like how before I was in a committed relationship, how uncomfortable it would make it would make me when I heard references to women taking shits or farting. Like I didn't want to believe that women farted. And, shit. And, and and you know and you know what really screwed me up is do you remember about uh, oh geez it had to be about fifteen years ago the first time Uncle Ken came and lived with us uh, he would he, he lived with us for I don't know about a year and uh, anyway anybody who doesn't know our uncle he kind of talks like this he's just real loud and obnoxious and he's just That's like uh, worse than hangover. he's got he's one like a, volume and it's fucking yeah it's, and, it's, and he's like a full time like drinker you know he's pretty much just always but he's like a friendly drunk you know what I mean but. He just always got something to say, like, in your face, dude, like that, you know? And he's one of those guys that, you know, you could be like, the sky is blue. He'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, and just, like, you're crazy type of thing. So anyway, he, uh, I was in high school, and he was staying with us, and uh, I had a pull-out bed where the truddle bed, or whatever they call it, trundle bed, where you can pull it out. So he was yep. he, would, he would sleep in, in my room or whatever, you know? And uh, anyway, so I, I, had, uh, I was in high school and was dating this girl or whatever, and I don't know, I think I was... Uh, 
I called her or something, and, and she was busy or whatever, and he goes, oh, what, she's probably taking a shit. And I was like, really? <laughs> what, what the hell? You know, and I was, like, offended. I was like, why do you got to go and say that? He's like, what? He goes, what, you think girls don't take shits, too? She's probably taking a big old fucking dump before she calls. She's probably thinking about you, and then she's going to call you back after she takes a big old shit and uses a half a roll of toilet paper to wipe her ass. That's so <laughs> funny. Nice. Are you serious? I'm like, you just completely ruined my whole vision of, like, ever even getting past second base with this girl now. Because, like, now I'm just, you know, thinking about what's coming out of her ass. You know what's funny? When I used to get, like, in junior high, when I'd get nervous about approaching a girl to ask her out or, you know, ask for a blowjob, um, <laughs> I would just imagine, I would imagine, this is really funny. Well, at least to me. I would just imagine them grabbing both knees on the toilet and just fucking forcing one out. And it made, me, it made me feel better because it brought, like, that human aspect back to it. Like, <laughs> I don't care if you're the hottest chick in school. You take dumps. Like, I have these weird moments sometimes where, like, I'll be in a crowded room. Like, I was at Target last week. And I was, like, I looked around me and I was, like, everyone here has had to take some shits in their life. Oh, yeah. Like, everyone here. <laughs> it's one It's one common denominator. Everyone has to shit. <laughs> Overdose, ladies and gentlemen, where you can get your weekly dose of us talking about poop and feces and blowjobs and whatever the fuck else. <laughs> It's well, yeah, common, I don't know. one of the commonalities that unite us all, though, man. I'm serious. Black, yeah. white, short, tall, fat, skinny, ugly. You know, it doesn't matter. Poop, it doesn't matter where you come from. Poop is non-discriminatory. It crosses shit all Shit is shit. It's going to come out of all of us, you know, every man, and... woman, or child, you know. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah, especially when you've, you know, anyone out there who's got little guys, like these, this little <laughs> guy back here, he had oh, a, yeah. a shit today that was really fucking interesting. They make some raunchy ones, man. Nathan's put a couple of them that, I mean, they were they were four alarm fires, and we had to remove them from the building. You know what I mean? We had to just completely remove the diaper from the building afterwards. Cause people were, were totally well. disgusted with me after we had Brad, and, like, people will post, like, I, I had a milkshake today and, like, all these, you know, meaningless events in their lives because they're fucking so self-involved. So I was, like, I was feeling spunky one day, and I, t I took a picture of a massive dump that Brad took, and I put it up <laughs> on Facebook, and... Everyone's like, that's disgusting. It's like, you know what? I think you talk about your fucking your fucking two mile run every ten minutes is fucking disgusting. Shut up. Mm. It's like you put you take a picture of the boil on your ass and like, you know, put it on Facebook and ask if it's cancerous for attention. Should I know? web MD uh, this? What what's <laughs> is it bad if it's getting bigger and oozing? What's this growth? It's fucking herpes. Stop sleeping around, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Boy. All right. Uh, the, I, I was just looking at a topic that intrigued me. I think he, this was one of Yellow Buses, but he was saying, "How do marriage or serious relationships affect your boys?" I don't. I don't know exactly what the topic. I don't is, know what, what that you means. Wrote. Well, I'm just saying, like the fact that you have, like, when you are like, I guess the thing is, is like when you're single, and even when you're like just starting to date a girl, like you know, you're still hanging out with your guys primarily. You're definitely not living with her. Once you like get serious, start living with her. Maybe even get married as you are, or uh, both of the Latuzics are. Um, that's when you know things just tend to change. You start to prioritize things different, and then like your old boys, who I mean, Joe, I mean, all of our friends are probably still single, and they haven't <laughs> grown up since high school anyway. So it's like, you know, for example, you know, you have you know you have your typical friends that just have not grown up and like they just don't understand the concept of like I have a priority other than whatever you're thinking because you're bored. You, you can relate to gaming, you can relate to anything really. Yeah, like there's both ends of that spectrum where like if you're the single guy and everyone's getting relationships, that's sort of depressing and if you're the guy in a relationship and all your single buddies are single, that's kind of depressing. Like I've gone through both of those and you know it was like in the early stages of getting serious with Jamie, it was cool to have this whole other like this dimension of like, hey, here's someone I can go to that's like not judgmental and like is like a best friend, except I wanna, you know, this best friend wants to suck my dick and it's not weird, you know. Like I, <laughs> I want my best friend to suck my dick, you know. <laughs> it's like it's a weird thing. Uh, so like, there's that going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the dick sucking going on. No, no, but uh, there's like this really cool bond. But then there's this whole thing of like, well. Like, all my single friends stop inviting me out because I don't do shit anymore. Because exactly. like, I've got to get up for work or, I, like, I'm doing this with, with my lady or whatever. And, like, that part sucks because then you, you see shit later on, like, especially with, with social media now. It's all up in your face. Hey, hey, jackass, you didn't want to come out last night? Look at the fucking 110 pictures of the great time we had. You're like, fuck, man, maybe I shouldn't have stayed home and, and eaten Cheetos and watched two episodes of Lost before I fucking fell asleep. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe I should have gone out and had some beers, you know? It's like there's there's both ends of that, but it definitely does change you, you know. 
It's just, you know, but it's like anything, man. You know, it, your life just evolves. I mean, and some people, they wind up never getting married and just kind of never settling down. And, you know, they're, they're, they're in their, you know, 30s. I mean, I, I have a couple of buddies that I still know of that are still, you know, uh, mid-30s now, and they're not married, not in any type of relationship. And, and that's pretty much what they do, man. They sit around, they, you know, smoke cigars and, you know, go to concerts and fucking stay out till 3 or 4 in the morning on Tuesday, you know, just for whatever reason or another. But it's just, I think, it's just a natural process that winds up, you know, happening. I mean, if you wind up uh, finding somebody uh, that you fall in love with, uh, hopefully, I mean, like in my case, uh, my wife was always very, uh, she was fine around friends or, or brothers or sisters, family members, whatever. Um, but, you know, as we got kids and everything else, I mean, it just was one of those things where most of the time now we'd rather go and, and hang out and take the kids to Sienna's Village the next day rather than going out and dropping a couple hundred bucks at a bar to, you know, maybe hang out with some people that we don't even really like that much anyway, you know, yeah. anymore uh, until two, three, four in the morning and then come home, you know, and, and be pissed off the next morning because we have no energy, no money, you know what I mean? And we're yeah. all over. So, yeah. and, and there's a time and place for it. We, you know, we still do it sometimes. Uh, we can still certainly, you know, go out and do things uh, on our own as well. It's just not as often as it used to be. You know, but like I said, I think that's just one of those, you know, it's just, it, it's the evolution of, you know, the, you just go from one stage to the next is all, you know. And, and, uh, and I hit, I hit a phase early on that I think a lot of people hit inevitably, but I, I hit it a lot earlier than some people. I turned 21 and I think within the first couple of weeks I was like, bar is a bar. Like, I don't care where you go. Like, there's some cool bars. Like, I've been to some pretty cool bars in some different locations. Um, but like the bars that are really cool that are worth like your time are super expensive. They just are. And so every other bar is like blaring music, a thousand monitors that are like for me with ADD, like <laughs> I can't focus on anything. So it's like to me, I would rather just yeah. like hang with my boys in the basement and drink a case of beer, you know, like I, and what's cool though about that, I think, is that when we do go out and you go see a band or you go have some drinks or something, you get all your boys together and you, you either have the wives with or they're at home or whatever, but it's like a night that everyone's get out and they're away from the kids or, or other commitments. It's like super cool then, because everyone's like sort of like fucking wound up from work and everything else, so shit gets uh, maybe not crazy, but it's just I think it's more fun than if I was going out every single fucking. Yeah, day. I think it is. Yeah, because it is. It's unique and it's not something that you're you're doing once once or twice a week, you know. So it's it's more of like uh, you know, it's like you're playing out like you know the movie American Reunion or something. You know what I mean? Getting together with some buddies, maybe a couple of them you haven't seen in a year, maybe a couple of them in from out of town, you know that sort of thing. So. Yeah, motherfucker. There she is. Who's got our next topic? Um, I want to talk I, about stupid fucking Hallmark holidays. Yeah, let's it's get your that chance. together. It's your <laughs> We're live, man. Gear Three up, buddy. Take a deep time breath. I talked about stupid fucking Hallmark holidays. This leads back to fucking Mother's Day. Okay? What would you do if right now I said, uh, by the way, we're not live? I would never talk about fucking Hallmark holidays again because obviously, hey, it's a good case of the Mondays just went down. Oh, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on over there? Back there? All right, you, you go on your rant. I'll fix I'll fix this. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> fucking tired. Everything's a fucking goddamn Hallmark holiday. You got Mother's Day. You got Father's Day. You got Grandparents' Day. Boss's Day. Uh, Halloween. Fucking Easter. I mean, I guess Easter, and you know. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. E Sweetest Day. Valentine's Day. Everything's a fucking day. You have to go to the goddamn store. Anytime you go to a fucking store, there's always some card for something that's coming up. Now, you know, now we're fucking dealing with fucking Father's Day. And then after Father's Day, who the fuck knows what's next, you know? I well, mean, and you see that especially in retail, too, because I remember when I, when I, you know, when I was worked in retail, you know, it was the same type of thing. It was, you know, and that, that's, that's how you calculated things. You know, once Valentine's Day was over, then you were getting ready for St. Patty's Day. And then once St. Patty's Day was over, you were gearing up for Easter. And then once Easter was over, you were gearing up for Memorial Day, you know, or Father, whatever. You know what I mean? And, the, and it was always something every few weeks, it seemed like, that was coming this is This is what I have to say for Hallmark. <laughs> I hate them. I fucking hate them. I swear to God, I do. Every fucking holiday, you know. I don't want a fucking card. You know, I, I know some people like, oh, you know, Mother's Day. It's when you, you know, you appreciate the mothers. Jesus Christ, aren't the mothers getting appreciated every goddamn day? Seriously, just like the fathers, you appreciate it every <laughs> damn day. Okay, there's days your fucking kids don't respect you. Big deal. That's fucking life. I'm, I'm a fucking boss. I don't expect a fucking card on Boss's Day. The people who are giving me a goddamn card on Boss's Day are the ones who are kissing my ass and thinking they're going to get a better raise. You know what I say to them? Same thing I say to Hallmark. Fuck you! 
<laughs> and that's my rant on Hallmark holidays. Thank you. I think some of them are are, are unnecessary and stupid too. You know, for that, for right? years I have not. Uh, you know, as far as like sweetest day, and even my wife says she goes, "That's just." Uh, you know, because a lot of times I'll forget I won't get her like flowers or I won't take her out or something like that, you know, and she'll say, I don't I don't even care. It's just, you know, and she'll even say it's just a stupid Hallmark holiday, you know. And over the years, uh, we both agreed that it, personally, I don't really care about cards. So I would rather have something that she made on the computer or that the kids did or something like that rather than going out and spending four or five bucks on a card, you know. Occasionally, you know, we've we've indulged and, and bought a funny one that was like a singing one or something, or where you could record something on it. But uh, you know, only for like a birthday or an anniversary. You know, one of the bigger, I guess, uh, more important, you know, holidays, as opposed to the uh, the bullshit filler. Ones. I don't even want. I don't even <laughs> want a fucking card on my birthday. I don't even want that acknowledgement. <laughs> that shit should away. That shit don't matter. You know, my kids. Are, my kids are like, "Hey, Dad, what do you want for Father's Day?" I'm like, "Nothing. Just leave me the fuck alone and forget stupid Father's Day." Seriously, I don't need to fucking go out and buy anything. What the fuck do I need, you know, stupid fucking shit for? If I want something, just like I've been doing my whole fucking life, I'll go out and buy it. I don't need my fucking kids I, to go out and buy me fucking anything. I can I can agree with the perspective that it's like it's a it's a nuisance. I find a lot of things amusing just because I think they're amusing. But like Sweetest Day is one that kind of bothers me because it's like okay, I, I care I care about my wife, and so like you know Christmas, birthday, Valentine's Day, okay, like. I, Already for me, just to coordinate for people who don't know me, like I, I have a hard time with um, like order, like placement of order, like chronological time. So like I had this like th this revelation with James a couple of weeks ago. Like as a kid, I didn't know the numbers of the month and and the order of the months until I was probably like ten years old, which is I think is pretty late. So like I don't know if I just grew up with this conception of time not being important to the way I process data, but for me like I'm not even good at giving you relative time. I had to re I had to re-record uh, that commentary about Bud Gaw and Sublime because I was like, yeah, sometime last year in the first one, and then I looked at it, and I was like, that happened like three and a half years ago. Like I can't I can't put a commentary out there and be like, yeah, last year when this happened. Like so for me, just remembering Valentine's Day and birthdays and like being able to to do that already is sort of a production for me. It's kind of it's kind of a bigger effort than I would like it to be, but it's important to me that I show my wife that I care. So when you have all these nonsense ones, and fortunately my my wife isn't isn't super crazy about them. She like Jim's wife kind of agrees with their Hallmark holidays, but it is one of those things where like I don't want to be made to feel like I'm doing something wrong on some like off fucking random day that I didn't happen to remember, you know. My, my whole point is, if you want to appreciate mom, if you want to appreciate dad, you want to appreciate your boss, don't do it when fucking Hallmark tells you to. Do it because you want to do it. Don't do that's it because it's a good point. A, I think that's a good point. Word. It's sweetest day. I have to go buy you a fucking card. Fuck you, Hallmark. Blow me. Are you guys saying Swedish? What are you guys saying? Sweetest. 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 That's oh. Swedish. Swedish. You know, like, I hate Swedish day. I'm like, yeah. that's kind of like, not right. Fuck, I, kinda, uh, I hate that's kind of racist. Nobody likes IKEA. Um, <laughs> fucking hate IKEA day. <laughs> no, the worst is working at you guys. You guys work. You got two retail, and we got one entrepreneur. And then I have the desk job. The worst is you work with a company of a hundred people. Every fucking week, there's like, oh, you got the three cars. It's like a little portfolio. Say happy birth. You know, wish uh, Mark and distribution a happy birthday. I'm like, I've never fucking met the guy. Yeah, the, I, I hate don't know that market shit, distribution. Man. Yeah, because like, I, I, I've been in office environment too, and even though I'm in the sales division, they're always Happy coming birthday. by and they're like, Margaret's 82nd birthday. And I'm like, fuck Margaret. Why do you want me to sign this card? <laughs> and he gets more complicated. They're like, do you know this person's in the hospital? We're signing this card to come over because hospice is going to be there. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that means they're at the end, man. I don't give it. They don't want my fucking signature. Well, they don't even yeah, know that's me. Actually, that's what's yeah, funny is I actually. There's times where you get it and you think it's a birthday card and you're like, ah, fuck, fine. And you like open it up and then all of a sudden, like, you're about to write, you're like, have a good. And then you're like, wait a second. You're like, you look at the front again and it's like, hope you feel better. And it's like, so generally, you're like, oh, fuck, what happened to him? Yeah, a couple, <laughs> couple years ago, because nobody looks at what you put down anyway, I started signing shit like Anakin Skywalker, uh, Barack Obama, you know, for the signature, <laughs> you know, and just putting yeah. like the Hank Aaron on one of them, you know, just to be funny. And, you know, and, I, and I've put some really goofy things, you know, you'll never get better, you know, things like that. <laughs> so, you, know. you know what's the worst? Have you guys ever started writing, like, it happens to me with stronger. cards every once in a while? But have you ever started a sentence with, with no explicit idea of how it's going to end, and then you re it's too late, you've realized you've written yourself into a corner, and you can't, <laughs> the only choice is to either try and 
finish it and try and make it make sense or scratch out everything that no, you No, I, I do why not at work. I like I, purpose, I, like, I just white out like a bunch of shit and people are like, what the fuck? Yeah, we got we got the white out tape at work. So yeah. it's like I'll go I'll I'll do like a whole paragraph and then like later on I'll go and look at it and I'm like, oh fuck this. So I'm like <laughs> And just putting strip after strip of this whiteout tape. You know what I hate about that whiteout tape is when it, it doesn't even resemble corner. paper after it's yeah. done. <laughs> you know, it's you can great. clearly tell that it's been like modified. <laughs> I hate th- I hate that whiteout tape when it comes over the edge of like the thing, and you have to try and re pull it up, and there's yeah. like the white shit all over your finger. Yeah, you know what's funny terrible. is I I have students that have these play style guitars, and I fucking I tell parents all the time like, if you want your student to if you want your child not your student my student your child. If you want them to, to have any, even a marginal chance of success, which they probably don't have because your kid's probably fucking stupid or doesn't practice or a combination of both, um, yeah, if you even want to give them a marginal 5% chance of, of succeeding at this, you have to get them more than these play-style guitars. And these play-style guitars are ones that you get at like a Mexican flea market that are like 10 bucks and they don't even tune right and whatever. <laughs> the problem with these all the time is not only the poor quality, but... The the frets are not marked. So uh, let's see if I can get it in the camera here. For our people who uh, don't know, these little dots on the guitar, these are fret markers. These tell you relatively where you are on the guitar. So when you're looking down at your guitar, you're not totally lost. Well, when you have a new student that's just utilizing the first five frets on the guitar and they have no fret markers, it's a colossal pain in the ass. Every week they literally come back having to relearn what they did the week before. So I got so fed up with these fucking parents not buying their kids the proper equipment. Because to get a starter guitar, you drop 50 bucks and the kids are good to go. But some of these parents are cheap asses or whatever. Um, that I started taking the whiteout thing and just putting on like whiteout friends on their, on their guitars. And it works for like a week until they rub off and then you know I, I do it again. But it's, a, it's an easy solution. So, yeah. Yeah, but another thing you can do with whiteout. Why don't you just use like a sharpie? Like I'm sure there's different colored sharpie you could use, like a white sharpie. Yeah, like what are those sharpie paint markers? Yeah, I was gonna say other paint markers. What I like about the the whiteout is if I get some crazy parent who's like, "You marked up my thing," the whiteout you just scratched right off. You know, you messed up my twenty dollars. No, I didn't. Fuck you. You messed up my Mexican (laughs) flea market guitar, man. Dude, one of the one of the things like fuck me, no, fuck you. (laughs) One of the things about about having your own business sort of thing is like. Okay, so like, for instance, with you, Sean, working for a big retail conglomerate, you know, if there's there's an issue, you can defer them directly to your boss or like to a hotline number, right? When it's just you and your wife, like, you sort of have to fucking rectify the situation. So you'd be surprised. Well, you probably wouldn't be surprised how ignorant some people get over like just stupid, minuscule shit. Like, I would not be surprised. Trust me. It's crazy, man. I want to speak to your manager. Um, I'm the owner. <laughs> Yeah. I had a guy I had a guy one time, I was in the middle of teaching a lesson to a student, and he was one of those lurkers who like wanted to sit in on every lesson and finally after a few lessons I was like, you know, you can sit on the lesson, but um, you know, your your son seems to be uncomfortable, so why don't you sit right outside the room and he won't know that you're there, even though the kid's still totally fucking new. But this guy thought he was like a a music theory master when he was like one of those dudes who just bought like a, a guitar chord book in college and learned how to like strum three chords and look in girls' eyes at parties, you know? And uh, so I was explaining like this this theory thing to a kid. I don't remember what it was about. It was it was about relative spaces between natural notes or something and he like starts correcting me in the middle of it. I'm like, no, you're flat out wrong. So I got I got into an argument with this guy. It was super <laughs> awkward. He ended up storming over the sun. Got to inform and, you. And he, so he storms out, and I call him all pissed off, which I shouldn't have done. And so we we get in this argument, whatever. And it was like this. It was this whole fucking thing. But it was like the one time I remember. That was like my first big blow up with like a, a, a client. And I was just like, you're gonna sit here and fucking try and tell me that you know more about music theory when you're like the dude who knows how to play like an A and a G. And it was just. It's ridiculous, like the lengths people will go to to prove that they're that they're right. Oh, you know? trust me. And the problem is too is that everybody now thinks because they can fucking Google something or they can look up the information on the internet that makes them an expert. An expert, you know. Right. So you get all these geniuses out there that you know they think because they looked up their ailment on WebMD that they can pass it off as truth that you would get from a fucking doctor that makes you know you know, half a million dollars a year, you know. <laughs> so. And it, it, so you have so many people in every facet of life. You see them all over the place that, you know, they, they, they start passing off this knowledge that they read in a Yahoo article, you know, as <laughs> as, as, as as the word, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the be-all, end-all of that particular subject. So did he not pay you? Like mom. Did he, like, refuse to pay you? 
No, no, no. His I talked to his wife on the phone. Well, this is this is what happened. I ended up basically calling the guy a fucking moron, and and I hung up on him. And then uh, and then I called his wife later after I realized that, that was a bad business move. <laughs> the thing that sucks is like in other jobs I could sometimes you got to eat a little shit, and but it's usually from the boss. You know, like uh, I've been I've been written up for mouthing off to customers and shit before, or. Uh, um, there was one that was really funny. I'm trying to. Uh, it doesn't matter now. But anyways, uh, you you sort of eat a little shit that way. What sucks about being a business owner is you have to eat. You have to eat the whole fucking balls and shaft and everything. It sucks. You just you, you totally you totally eat it. So I you called the wife and I was like, I explained the situation with her husband. I apologize. And so what I ended up doing was offering the, them like two free lessons because um, I was unprofessional. So, I mean, I think it was the right thing to do. They, they ended up leaving like six months later, which was fine. The kid was a fucking moron anyways, but... <laughs> you know, it's and like it's just sad. Like, you know, I would have... I shouldn't have said the kid was a moron. I'm being judgmental. The, the kid had potential. It's just that he had that chip on his shoulder that his dad had, that ignorant tunnel vision thing where, you know, it, there's a difference between having like a little bit of rebellious streak where you question um, wisdom that's just handed to you and then there's just flat out ignorant people and they were just an ignorant undereducated group of people which is you never want to deal with anyway so to me it's like I might as well get those people out and it, dude like it's, it's no worse than anywhere than on YouTube you see like the like the craziest shit thrown around sometimes I'm glad I haven't really had a lot of that yet but I know like if my channel grows to that point it's just gonna get fucking crazy you know the first yeah. guy <laughs> after the PKA advertisement which we haven't even been able to talk about because of all the shit with streaming um, that first guy that was like, <laughs> you can't pay for subs, you piece of shit, and don't use stock music either. <laughs> we should invite him as a guest on the show. <laughs> we totally should, dude, just to rip the yeah, guy apart. why not? Seriously, man. People I like that. He's a legit would. guy. I, yeah, and you know, and it's fine. We'll let him on. We'll, uh, you know, everybody deserves their day in court, you know, but... I'll, that was I'll, funny, though. I'll tear a motherfucker apart, you know? <laughs> so You know, it's yeah. all that jazz, man. It's just all that jazz. Is that sort of like an old person joke that only you get? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm I thought you would have gotten that, that, Surf. Oh yeah, his name was Jazz. Oh well, maybe we shouldn't say. Oh fuck uh, it, his name was Jazz. Yeah, McNeil. Fuck it. Jazz. Yeah, it was Jazz McNeil or something. If one of you watching us the future, if you see some fucking fuck turd out there called Jazz McNeil, then fucking spam him with a big picture of a. Of a no, we should really invite him on the show and now have him talking. I, and you know what? Though I think the main thing is with 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 these people, and you're gonna see as, as things get bigger and bigger for you, is that. It, Really, you just got to take the high road, and, you, and you're just going to have to you're just going to have to ignore yeah. them, you know. And and right now, it, it's not as easy to do because it, you know you don't have a hundred thousand people with five thousand comments on each video. And so I mean, you can actually go and you can read everything, and it pisses you off because you know you're putting you're putting your time, your dedication, your talent into what you're doing, your creativity. And then when somebody goes and does something like that, it's just like, really, you're gonna try to demean everything I did with a couple yeah. of sentences. And you know, you know what? Fuck him. He's probably you know 30, 35, living in his parents' basement. He's got pasty white skin. You know what I mean? He couldn't get lucky in a woman's prison with a fistful of pardons. You know what I mean? Got you know, <laughs> yeah, seriously, got a dick that looks like a tic tac. And people like that Stop though, talking they go, about me. Damn they it, go, you just described me to a <laughs> they go on, But they you know, those those type of people, man, those trolls, that's what they do. They go on there, you know what I mean? They'll they'll go on to you know, whoever's site it is, you know, just to go in and try to start some rage and shit, right. you know. And, and you know, to be honest, honest like you know. the the only the only reason I had brought it I had brought nice Tim. Uh the only reason I had brought that up in the next commentary that I did was because I do want to start that tradition on the channel, like in the community of like because what here's what you always see on YouTube: somebody yeah. makes an ignorant comment, someone defends it, and then it gets into it turns into like a grammar war. Oh <laughs> like yeah, you see that? Oh, oh well, you yeah. must be stupid because you know whatever. You must have been your instead of yeah, you are. You exactly. Know? It's like turns into your like that. argument so, like, is invalid. I would love <laughs> if I could get like my subscriber base on board with the idea of like I said, like just like when people show hate, show some love. You know, even if it's just like a neutral statement. Like I think Sean, you wrote like hate is gonna hate. Like that's a neutral statement. That's not like hate is gonna like. fucking sucks dick. You know, like it, it was pretty <laughs> ambiguous. So I think I want to start that tradition. That, that's why I mentioned it on the channel. But I'm in the same vein of thought as you, dude. Like I set myself up for this. Like. I've been watching YouTube videos for a few years, and I've heard guys complain about it a lot, and I was like, you know what? One thing I'm going to do going into YouTube is flat out expect that. And I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner, to be honest. Like, even just with a few people, like, randoms outside of friends and family seeing my videos, I would expect someone to be like, douchebag, like, already, you know? But 
It hasn't, you know, that was really the first guy. Well, besides my comments, I mean, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Here, you want to say hi uh, for a minute? Bradley's going to say hi for a minute. Really What's up, B? What's going on, man? For, our, for man. our stream viewers, not that I give too many shits, but I'm not a bad parent. He usually is in bed like three hours ago, but uh, he misses mommy tonight, right? Do you miss mommy? Yeah. What's yeah, up, Big B? Why don't you say something to all the people? That's all me. How you doing, say, what's buddy? Up, what's up? Yeah. Well, as long as he's quiet, we'll continue to talk. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, it's 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 an interesting place the channel is is going. I think. Like, I, I was I was bummed all last week. Are you gonna talk now? Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe. Um, no, but surf uh, up, surf up. All last week. Why don't you put this back in? Actually, you're quieter then. <laughs> He's more entertaining than most of us, so... Yeah, really. Just put him on here. <laughs> there is but, uh, awkward moments, though. So it was, like, what I didn't expect is... And I should have thought about this, but... Um, I had this huge spike... Where, where's my hand? had this huge spike yeah. in, yeah. in um, subs, and now it's starting to taper off. Like, there's yeah. going to be a decline for a while, I think, because people just yeah. sub not thinking about it. Now they're looking at the stuff, and they decide, hey, this, this guy sucks, and so they're leaving. So it was kind of a bummer to see like people leaving in droves. Like I think over the past thirty days, I've lost like eighty-five subs. Um, but it's been counterbalanced that I've gotten like fifty new subs. So it's been like a net loss of like thirty-five subs, which I I don't want to get in that habit of looking at at the the viewer count. Like it's important that there's an audience there, but at the same time, like it's more important that it's about the subscriber and like the content that I'm putting yeah. out for the channel. So and you and you want the you right type of audience is. anyway, because I mean, honestly, you look at some of these people that got a million, million and a half subs. That's that's cute, but how many of them are actually actively watching things? You know what I mean? Probably, Absolutely. Probably ten percent of that. Many people subscribe to things; they forget about it. I know there's some things that I've subscribed to, and I just don't get around to watching a lot of stuff on them, just because I don't have a lot of time. So really, it's the stuff that really, really draws my attention that I wind up seeing. So all you're doing now is you're just going to kind of refine and you're going to get the right type of people. And those people are going to go and talk to other people that are friends that have the same type of interests and, and say, hey, check this guy out and that sort of thing. So the people that you're losing, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just people that, you know, uh, I think you said it in a video that you put up, it's just not for them. And that's fine. Right. You don't want those people anyway because you don't want an inflated number that is really doing nothing for you anyway. You know, and that's arbitrary like, and, number isn't going to do anything unless yeah. those people are actively looking at, at what you're putting out. You know. So. And that's where I'm trying to be at with it now. In that, <laughs> see this face, the kid. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to unplug your shit. But it's like you know, out of even before, like when I only had 37 subs, um, like the out of those 37 subs, the majority of them were watching. The videos, you know, and now out of you know 390 or whatever 380, um, it's nowhere near that, which is which is fine. But it would be nice to see like out of out of a bigger number to have a more concentrated audience. So I guess that's why like now I am sort of starting to take that perspective that you just described of like, hey, I'm getting the right viewers in, you know, and like that's that's more important ultimately, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, my opinion is I'd rather have 5,000 dedicated people that are watching yeah. things on a consistent basis than 100,000 people that maybe only five or ten percent of are even watching, yeah. you know, and, and they're watching one out of every 20 things I put up because something in the title caught their interest or they were bored that day and were on yeah, YouTube definitely. at work, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to so, get this guy down really quick. I'm sorry. You guys keep talking, but he's getting... Well, I mean, another thing, too, is we haven't done... I mean, not to... You know, Joey, you always have, like, three videos a week, and I think you've only made, like, maybe two in the past two weeks, and we haven't had an overdose. That's probably why you lost some, but, I mean, this one, I don't even know what the viewer count is, but I think when just shit gets back to normal and you can make your videos again it'll be better i mean i i only saw like i think i only saw one video that you made this week or oh no yellow buzz he's been putting out four or five videos a week he's he's been putting them out but you know honestly a couple of them have just been like those video log filler type things i think just to oh, okay. just to kind of put things out there well, um, yeah the commentary stuff, because here, here's the big thing, and this is what I was telling you guys, is that ultimately um, people that came over from PKA, they're people that like to watch a show like that, uh, and they're, they're gaming people, you know what I mean? So a lot of those people, you know, they're not going to have as much of an interest in things that, that aren't geared towards that. So I think that, you know, if, we, if we're back on track doing the overdose every week, I think that will help, uh, like you had said, uh, uh, Tim. Yeah. You know, just because you know, obviously, if the, these a lot of these people that you know that they come over, um, you know, certainly they're they're not adverse to watching these type of things, <laughs> these shows. You know, watching people sit around and talk about stuff. 
Um, so yes, I, so I think that'll probably help too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, right, it's, right. It's, yeah, and like that—that that was a, an interesting thing too. Like the, over the, the past couple of weeks, is figuring out like I don't want to feel pressure to change my content um, because I've gotten a, I've got a certain type of viewer. But at the same time, I really do like to do commentary, so I'm trying to find that line of like, you know, the. The thing is for me is like once making music video stops being fun, I'm not going to do it anymore. And like last week was super busy, and it just it just wasn't a good week for making music videos. I got a couple out, and this week is pretty busy too. There's probably a lot of in fact probably until in, until the end of June, probably not until July, am I going to be able to have a really heavy focus on music again, just because it's we're so crazy busy with recital. But uh, so I I like. I like that the channel is is very don't you know? don't make it focus. Just do whatever you want. I don't care what people say. Like you should just do whatever feels good. And you know that's the whole thing is like I'm not going to start like you know taking orders from people and shit. Like it's that thing where you need to play more Call of Duty. Yeah, and my, my thing is too is like the focus isn't like it's totally all over the map. It's just a wider focus. It's music and games, you know, and then like you know just vlogs and shit. But that's that's common on gaming channels too. So to me, it's like. Okay, if you can't handle two things, then you 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 shouldn't be here, <laughs> you know, because that's really that all the channel is. So I only I only game. I don't have fun. I don't know anything about music or culture. I just game. And I've seen some comments too, which is what I was sort of looking for, which was a nice affirmation of, of people who were like, I don't even play music, but I like watching the video because I thought it was funny. And like that was the whole the whole idea when I started a channel. I said to myself, if I'm going to do anything with music. I'm going to do it different and better than the other guys are doing. And not better by, like, I have better presentations or, or a better way of explaining things because, as you guys know, I, I can ha hardly articulate my half-baked thoughts. But I'm going to do it better, i.e., in terms of, like, that it's actually palatable, that you can watch it and not want to fucking... You know, I'm a musician. I love theory. I love all these kinds of things. And I watch these guys, and I'm like, oh, my God, put a fucking bullet through my head, you know, where it's like... If I could find someone that I really enjoyed, I would watch them more often. I found this channel called Adventure Drums, and the guy is like, he's pretty random too. But he, he does this—he was explaining this one thing with his hand. He's like looking at the camera. He's like, if you don't do this with your hand, you'll get cancer. <laughs> he's just like, you'll get body cancer. It's just like just t like these terrible random things he says. <laughs> it was like refreshing to finally see another music guy aside from myself. Who's like trying to do shit in, in an entertaining way? And for me, it's just me being me. You know, when I'm doing that shit on camera, like it's just you guys know how I am in conversation a lot of times. It's just random people shit. doing like the Apple split screen acapella where they have like different faces and different angles. Yeah, I got uh, I got Final Cut Pro by the way, and some other shit. I'm just too intimidated to actually figure out how to use it. Yeah, I got uh, I got Brian over last week too. He came by and he installed uh, Photoshop. Uh, CS6 for me. I guess that's the newest one or whatever. So, uh, so I started playing around with that a little bit, man. That that is going to be a really really cool tool. And um, I don't know about some of the advanced stuff, but I know I know that a lot of the basics I'm going to be able to just you know kind of do a, a self you know a self taught <laughs> type deal because I've already been watching you know some different videos and, and things like that. To, uh, but I think it's really going to do some really cool things. So. I got I, I got chlamydia last week, so we all got something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gift that keeps on giving, buddy. <laughs> exactly. I never tell my sexual partners I have it, but hey. It's <laughs> what not is Joe AIDS? doing to that baby? It's not AIDS or anything. He just drank <laughs> It's okay. What you do is, like, what I used to do, you know, my kids were younger. My kids are, you know, I don't know, like 37 and 12. I don't even know anymore. Um, is I used to, used to, you know, grab them by their, ar by their arms, hold them up, and shake them real fast and sing rock a -bye, baby <laughs> And what would happen is their eyes would roll behind their head, and they would be out for fucking days. It was th the greatest, easiest babysitting job I ever had to do. Uh, yeah, I think those are called seizures, and, and I believe they're illegal in all 50 states to actually put, to actually put your <laughs> child into a coma. I'm just saying that's all, you know, so I don't, I don't care. I don't judge, uh, you know. That's hey, frowned upon now. My, my kids are totally normal, so they have a twitch once in a while, you know. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, that's all right, a little nervous twitch. You slap okay. the shit out and they're so, fine, you know. So it's big deal they have to take the little yellow bus to school. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Little bus. I always <laughs> loved in, uh, in uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. You know, when they go up, uh, Cousin Eddie shows up, Randy Quaid, you know, uh -huh. with his and his daughter, and, and the grandma goes, oh, my God, her eyes aren't crossed anymore. <laughs> he goes, yep, go figure. Fell down a well, eyes go across, got kicked by kicked a by mule. mule. <laughs> <laughs> or ain't better. I don't know. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> 
That was a yeah. classic movie, man. Oh, yeah, it was great. We always uh, we always watch that one around. You know, you, you do know, there's one thing that's been pissing me off, too, besides Hallmark Holidays. And yesterday I went and saw uh, Fast and the Furious 6 uh, with my son, and we're coming out of theater, and, you know, every theater you're in, they show, you know, they have the posters for the coming attractions. Okay. There's um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. 2. Despicable, Despicable Me 2. Me too. Real. Wo- Wolverine 2. Two. Smurfs 2. Two. Smurfs 2. Hunger Games 2. There was a total of like eight movies that were number twos. That are you know why? Name. Because they're all shit. It, it's, you know what it is, is that with these movies now, and the same thing with the games, I think I had mentioned this uh, probably probably one of the first episodes, is that it seems like there's not a whole lot of new ideas going on out there in these studios that even if there's a marginal return on some of these movies, these animated films and stuff like that, CG, the cost is coming down and the technology is getting better to be able, and the, and the, the cycle of being able to put out these CG movies is, is much quicker than it used to be. So, you know, I think now, like I said, if there's a, a movie that was even slightly in the positive, fuck it, let's do a sequel, you know? So let's do a sequel. I mean, because then we don't have to come up with a new idea. Let's just, you know, let's just rehash Tyler and, Perry. and throw in a new character and find some actor that, you know, uh, that you know could use a job and a little boost in his career, um, you know, that, that'll do the voiceover work and we'll add this a new work. character and, you know. Well, right. You know, it's like any business model. They're trying to reduce risk as much as possible. So if they could take less of a gamble by just, and you know, they they don't care if they have to if they have to churn out ten films that have smaller profit margins, but they're guaranteed profit margins. They're going to do that rather than take a gamble on like even a big name guy like James Cameron with something like Avatar, where it requires so many millions up front and whatever else. You know. Yeah. Yeah, So, but it's it's un it's just unfortunate that like business has to be involved with creative work. It just sucks because like, it really does diminish the quality of what's out there. There's so many guys that have really, really great shit that we'll never hear about or never see because they can't get the funding or they, they get they hit too or, many or they wind ends. Up get, or they wind up getting the funding, but uh, they wind up having to... They, their vision is never fully realized because uh, you know the, 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 the marketing and everything else is all to be rolled out and it's just like, listen, this is what we had for the budget. This is what you have for time. I don't care yeah. if you need an extra six months to make it look better and to make it how you want it you got to finish it and have it out now you know or whenever yep. the, that deadline is so a lot of times they're forced into cutting things short cutting features out of games and things like that just because of the monetary and the time constraints that are put on them you know i think that's sort of a funny thing too because it's like okay our currency hasn't been backed by the gold standard for a lot of years so like your money doesn't even mean that it's backed by gold whatsoever so it's it's a symbol you know just like language is a symbol just like the economy only exists as an abstraction in our mind it's it's something that we've created it, we've created so the economy only works as well as as we treat it, and it, and so that's why it seems funny to me that at this place in human history, it still hasn't even been remotely discussed as an option on the table to eliminate currency, because the same amount of resources, skills, and labor exists in the world before or after, and we just kind of have this arbitrary token that says, hey, this is worth this, this is worth that. To me, it makes a lot more sense to have a system like, say, a merit system or something, and I'm not the genius to figure out how that would work, but I know that it's possible, and it would alleviate problems like Profit margin, you know, uh, where creative people could actually be allowed to be creative then, and and uh, I don't know. I think it would overall make a better uh, unified way to live, but we're probably a long way off from that. You got you got way too many people out there who are not smart enough to to make to connect those dots. <laughs> I agree. There's a lot of dumb people out there. Well, a it's just of, a, it's it's a, a strange thing. People too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, look at all of us. You don't realize that you go in the workforce. It's like wow. How do you live with yourself? Like McDonald's twice a day, every fucking day. <laughs> every fucking day. That's brutal, dude. There's people out there like that. Like Sean and I were just talking about an, an employee we used to work with who we will leave unnamed, but she'd come, she'd come in every day like she just fucking robbed a 7-Eleven. Like, you wonder why you fucking look like Chris Farley. Like, you, you know, like you can't eat a bag of Cheetos for a snack. You just can't do that. Like... And some people just don't care. I don't hey, like. Hey, 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 surf! I hate to jump in here. No, no, go ahead. I was just kind of looking at comments at the at, at the bottom of the, the YouTube. Yeah. Hey, you want to give a shout out to your who who did your new banner? Oh, is he here? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. no, he, he does have he does have something written in there, and I just think it'd be nice to give him a shout out. Oh hell yeah! Um, oh shit, dude, we've got a bunch of guys. Yeah. 
But I just yeah, thought that, one of them, one of them was actually me. But don't well, yeah, it. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even recognize we had those comments up. Um, yeah, the Echo Gaming PC. He made my banner, and he's actually working on another one right now. And I haven't made a shout out video yet because we were we were working on this. Well, not we. We talked about it, but he's working on a, a new banner for me. So I will. I'm actually going to do a specific video for Echo Gaming PC uh, once that's out. But shout out to him. And uh, and you know what? Let me. Let's, well, I just subscribed little... to I just subscribed to him, so I think we all should just because he's pretty badass. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's uh, also there's also a questionnaire. It says Jim's Nerd Nation. What is that thing called? What Ooh, is that thing called? Oh, it's, it's actually a. Uh, it's ahead, actually it's uh, it's uh, the channel that I'm in the process of launching over here. So um, mostly directed towards just pretty much anything nerdy. Um, so or that would be considered you know uh, as uncool. Um, to, to certain groups of people out there, so um, you know, gaming, uh, art, uh, sci-fi type things. I've got a couple of friends that are going to be doing some various uh, things as well uh, on, on the channel that do uh, like cosplay type stuff. One of them is a female friend of mine that's uh, quite attractive. Uh, another one is a uh, is a guy who's actually he's going to be on the uh, the show here in a couple of weeks as a guest. Uh, he just graduated with his uh, bachelor's of uh, 3D animation and uh, and is getting into video game programming. Um, but at any rate, so yeah, it's just gonna just gonna encompass a little bit of everything, and um, you know should have it up here in the next uh, in the next week or so. That know, was from uh, Gun Victing. And also, shout out to Gaming Phenomenon. I was going to say shout out to Gaming Phenomenon too because I've noticed that. Uh, um, he or she, I don't know, I'm assuming it's a guy, um, has been following my videos and commenting and, and checking out the stuff, so I super appreciate it. Like, it's a, it's a really cool thing to see the regular guys, and I've heard, like, big commentators, too, mention, like, they're like, yeah, man, I still recognize some of those old, like, old-time subs, you know, when they comment on videos and stuff, and I'll, I'll if, I'm, if I'm ever one of those big guys, I will remember, like, these guys who are following me now, so, so shout out to Gaming Phenomenon and Echo Gaming PC, and, uh, I mentioned in a video once. Hey, Barnby is another guy who's been uh, been real cool. So it's awesome, man. Like, there's just good synergy going on in the community, and I really like that. And that's cool. I mean, that kind of brings us back to what you know we were talking about. You know, a little while ago is you know you're getting the right people, and that's what it's about is the right people. I mean, you know, the people who it's not for, it's not for. So be it. You know. Yeah, like it's, it's like it is like it is hard. You tell yourself that, and then it's like hard sometimes when my my problem is I. I I have no attention span, but when I do focus on something, I, um, what's the word? Like I fixate. Like it's I focus. The point where it's it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's obsessive. Like it's the point where like it, it'll get it'll be like unhealthy. So like there's times when I'm like deliberately like fuck YouTube and turn it off for like two days or something, you know. And like for me that's a big stretch. But uh, but yeah, I'm getting to that point where I'm just like yeah, like I have to be secure in the content that I'm making and not, not question my shit so much and like ultimately just keep talking about what I want to talk about and you know, which I was going to ask you guys about we we talked we touched on this briefly a couple weeks ago but we never really went into it is I'm thinking of changing the surname of the the strange entertainer thing and I don't know, like the, part of it was branding um but the other part, sorry, there's like some shit going on upstairs. <laughs> uh, Are your like uh, parents-in-law having the nasty? Yeah. Uh, the, That'd uh, be good. Are they, are they cleaning? I think they might be cleaning. Yeah, it could be surfed up entertainment. There's some shit going on upstairs. <laughs> there's some shit going on, motherfuckers. <laughs> that was actually a joke because they, I'd never seen them clean. I, I caught it, but I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I went there. I went there. I can only say it because my aunt's a hoarder, a hoarder as well. I just uh, took God the high road on that one, but it's you know. fucking it's going down up there, man. <laughs> Yo, put your speaker up there. I want to hear that shit. No, no, no fighting, it's fighting like, over it's, a bag of Cheetos or something. Or? No, it's it's a it's oh. like a marital argument. But uh, I don't want I don't want to hear it because I listened to it for twenty years, lived with my parents, so I don't need to hear it again. Been there, but, done that. <laughs> any, anyways, though, I was I was considering changing the world's strangest entertainer thing because when I first started making videos, it occurred to me that like. The way I was doing things was a little bit strange, but it's also strange that, like, I have these videos that are totally obnoxious, like, I've got a song about whores and Viagra and, like, fucking chicks in the ass, and then I'll have a commentary about, like, higher perspective. <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's like a weird, weird yeah. commentary. And then you're, like, educating people and, like, quoting lines from books and shit. <laughs> Just, it's weird, but, like, that's, that's exactly who I am. Like, you know, any, I mean, everyone here knows me, but, like, the YouTube community doesn't have the opportunity to hang out with me regularly, which isn't a bad thing, you guys. Well, unless they want to. 
largely unimpressed. But like that's totally the synopsis of who I am. Like I, I I'm this like goofy off the wall sort of thing going on, and like at the same time I, I'm really super into like metaphysics and science and philosophy and. So it's it's weird. Metaphor. So in that way, it's strange, you know. Metaphor. But I don't feel like the branding is appropriate overall. In that, like, if I had stuck with my original plan of just doing music videos, yeah, all the stuff would be pretty strange because all of the music videos are shot in a similar way. Where I'm just like, hey, I'm gonna have a good time explaining this, and it's strange. But because I've got this other aspect, I don't know. I just don't know if it's suiting. So I don't want to be misleading to people either. So I don't know. I've thought about changing it. I don't know what anyone else thought. Northwest Chicagoland's most unique person. Yeah. He's a legit guy. <laughs> Served up straight guy. legit. <laughs> Too legit to quit. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, do you have, did you have anything in mind, or were you just kind of throwing it out there looking for suggestions, or... Well, I'm... Uh, we should leave it to our fans, too, because we'll get trolled like hell, and he can make a funny name. By the way, gaming phenom phenomenon, it's a guy. Just want you to know that he made it perfectly clear in the comments. Okay, okay. I, well, I girls assume... like aren't good at gaming anyway, so it's pretty yeah. like a gaming. I, that, assu I that. assume that it was a dude. Sorry, I'm so distracted by the argument. No, hey, let me let me jump in with something because I wanted to go back to Surf when you were talking about uh, you know, you pissed off that dude earlier. You <laughs> I'm know? a guy. Thanks. <laughs> Love it. I was a guy until I had my penis cut off, but we won't get into that. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, I want to say for another show. Yeah, I want to say like two weeks ago, my boss comes into the. It, well, I get an email from him, and it's it's a complaint from a customer, which isn't surprising to me because I get plenty. <laughs> of okay, and you know, he's like, he's like, Sean, what's going on? So you know, I send him a you know paragraph email that he never reads, and um, he comes in the store the next day, and he's like, uh, so explain to me what happened with the customer. So, uh, you know, I go ahead and I explain to him what happened, and he's like, why is it that you're my only manager in the district that I get emails about negatively every single week? <laughs> so, and well, I at least I'm him. consistent, boss. <laughs> well, yeah, I explain to him, it's like, you know what, I don't have payroll, people are waiting in line, and they see me up there with my name badge that says store manager, and what do they do? They vent on me. No matter what I do, I could sit here and fucking go down on them and get them off in 10 seconds, and they'll be like, you're a douchebag. You're such an asshole. If you could go down on people and get them off in 10 seconds, you're in the wrong profession, brother. <laughs> so, yeah, you can make some big money right there. <laughs> I was going to say, man, seriously, and I will market that shit. I'll back you. Uh, so you know. Also, maybe, I got, maybe I'm going to step down from retail. Hold on. I'm going to text my boss right now and quit. <laughs> during my vacation, and uh, we can start a new business venture, Mr. Uh, Jim Jim's Nerd Nation. Oh well, yeah, I get we get plenty of paying customers, buddy. So plenty. I just of thought it was. Customers. I just thought it was funny. I mean, it's just like. Uh, I'm sorry, though, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's, finishing up over there. So. No, I mean it's, it's it's just funny. It's the fact that I'm you know I'm naturally just a dick. I'm not going to lie about that. It's just the fact that uh, I think a lot of people take me the the wrong way. It's, you know, I mean, I'm sitting up there and I'm ringing them up and they just come up and go you know, they just ramble on like a, a bitch does. Not saying all women are bitches, but the women who ramble on to me are bitches. And, you know, it's just, it's fucking annoying. And oh, thank like, God. My heater just went on so I can't hear as well. And I, you know, I end up going taking, down, dude. Shit's going down. I'm sorry, go ahead. And, and, you know, I end up, I end up taking you know, the, the gist of it. You know, you, you know, if you're pissed off and your husband doesn't want to fuck you, you know, there's a reason for it. Don't take it out on me. Seriously, I'm just up here doing my fucking job. Listen Sean, you, you have a husband now? You know, I'm talking, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I got married. Um, you as missed as the whole, yeah. Leader. It's a simple um, union. Uh, yeah, yeah, civil union. Know, but, uh, you know. Cheaper taxes, it's no reason I married a dude. He's in the back right now. You can't see him. He's sleeping. His name is Worked Worked him over before the podcast, so he'd be knocked out. <laughs> Yeah, dude, you probably eat a ton of shit and dicks as a, as a store manager. Dude, I, I eat so much shit, seriously. And it's like, one time, it's like, this is probably about a year ago, and I even brought up to my boss at my review that I was so fucking livid about. I held, I held fucking a grudge for a year because he, you know, this lady came in, and she had a receipt from a previous, a store I ran before that had closed. And on the receipt, it said no refunds. She came into my current store a year later and wanted to be, wanted to be refunded. I still gave her her money back. She called and complained. He made me call her, apologize to her, and send her a $25 gift card. Oh, wow. That is fucking bullshit. And I was yeah. like, and, and you, know, you know what? I know when this happened. This happened on Memorial Day last year, because I, I, and this is just all, almost a year ago. And I, I, 
I was so fucking pissed for a year at him that it took me almost a year to bring it up. He's like, you know, you need to let things go. I'm like, no, I'm not going to let things go. If I'm right about something and I still took care of the customer, why the fuck do I have to sit here, call her? No, I didn't have to call her. He made me write a letter. So I had to write a letter to her. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Longhand? No, shorthand. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. (laughs) Yeah, so I I had to write her a fucking letter. I had to send her a gift card. I mean, how fucking ass nine is that? You know, dude, why'd you wait so long to bring it up? Usually, you're the first guy that, like, as soon as something's wrong, you say some shit. Well, because this happened a year ago. No, I understand, but why'd you wait the year? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think I brought it up to him because I didn't see him for a while because he kind of stayed away because he called me on the phone and told me what I need to do, and I'm like, I'm a bitch. Exactly. You know, so you know, I hope her fucking. I hope one day she fucking gets extra flow and she fucking bleeds all over herself, bitch. So I, I have a, a quick story over here, and uh, I uh, so I think it was about uh, eight or nine weeks ago when we started this. It was right around the time that Bioshock Infinite came out, so I think that was one of our topics we were talking about it. At any rate, I I didn't pre-order it, but I bought it and paid for it in full, like the day th- that it was coming out at, at midnight. And uh, my wife took my son up there, my oldest son, and they wound up getting this really neat poster that's actually in, in the background here. And the game, and uh, it, you know, played it, had a good time, whatever. And I hate GameStop in general. I, I don't like giving them my money ever, but they were the only place doing the midnight release, and my son really wanted to play the game, you know. So now I've played it, I've shelved it, I'll probably go back and play it again sometime. But my wife gets a phone call and a message uh, right about an hour before we uh, got on here for the podcast. Some guy from the GameStop wants to know when we're coming to pick up our Bioshock, and uh, you know because it's paid for and everything else and blah blah. So, so I call the guy back, and I'm trying to think on my feet, which I, I do pretty well with things. And the guy goes and uh, he says, uh, "I said, yeah, you know, I got a message, something about a game that wasn't picked up or whatever, you know." And the guy says, "Well, yeah, you know, I mean, you, you know, you paid for it a couple months ago, and uh, I mean, you can roll the money over to another game if you want or whatever, but you know, it's paid in full." So instead of doing the honest thing and saying, well, no, we already picked up that game, Mr. GameStop employee that likes to fuck me in the ass whenever I try to bring in my games and give me $2 trading credit for a $60 game, I didn't say that. I, you know, I just told him, I said, well, geez, you know, I said, uh, my wife and I are separated. And uh, I said, I want to pay in for the guy. I said, my son, he splits, it's been real rough on him. He splits time between you know, my place and hers and everything else. I said, you know, so we buy him a lot of shit to, to help make up for the fact that we're shitty parents and that we're, we're apart, you know. I said, so what happened is I paid for it in full, and I thought that he just went and picked it up. But I'll bet you, you know, my, my ex-wife probably bought him one, too. I said, I better give her a call. So this guy just bought it hook, line, and sinker. And whatever glitch happened in their computer... I mean, we got the game two months ago, but they didn't scan the fucking thing out, and they still got it that I got a $60 credit. So it was one of those things that actually happened uh, in my favor. And it couldn't have happened, uh, to, first of all, to a nicer person like myself, I must say, but also to um, you know a, a shittier company in general, You because know, GameStop's notorious for fucking people you know, out, of their, out of their money with that trading credit and everything else. So, so anyway, i got to go scoop up this. That, that's pretty much my story in a nutshell, is that uh, I wound up, you know, just kind of falling into a pile of shit and coming out smelling like roses. So I get to stop that's in the, there and pick that's out the a fucking... game whenever I want, or I can roll it over to another game, or you know, whatever. I got sixty-five dollars and some odd cents. And that's pretty rad. I was gonna say that's uh, that you just described Yellow Bus's life. <laughs> it doesn't matter what Tim does; it seems like you've you you come out of it like just comes a really out of perfectly. Situation. Yeah. The original story that I was going to tell uh, Surf was the one that I had mentioned to you when we first started doing the the podcast about that uh, about that certain atrocity that I committed with that model box at Toys R Us. Uh, oh yeah, year, years ago. So and and we were doing, since Sean was talking about shit and everything like that, it made me made me think about that one. But I may save that one for another time. No, I'll, I'll let everybody else uh, talk a little bit over here. And, and we'll see if it uh, if it comes back around and you know. Well, shit, what what's even the topic anymore? I don't even fucking know. Uh, the top. I was just going back to the previous topic. Wanted to bring up about how awful I am apparently at my job and how I piss everybody off. Oh. Well, yeah. I mean. And now I had to go over and fucking give that woman's dog a bath and you know feed her fucking <laughs> candlelight dinner and give her a gift card and you know. Exactly. <laughs> fucking take clean her garage and shit. I mean, seriously, yeah. you gotta send her a gift card too. Yep. Yeah. It was fucking wonderful. You know Man, what's I, what's weird is if Sean, if you had the interpersonal skills to relate to people and to have the customer service skill, you'd be unstoppable. You'd be like the full show because you're so. Like, f- full homo here. 
I had a ton of managers in retail, and I've never had anyone as as efficient as Sean. You're just really good at what you do, dude. Like it just is what it comes down to. That's sexy. Don't want to sound like a queer northern, but you're pretty cool. I don't want to sound like a queer northern, but I want to suck your dick. But when we were, but when we were both man. standing up in the bathroom pissing next to each other, I looked over and I peeked at your wanger. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have the magnifying glass to really see it, but I knew there was something there. I, I, I peeked. I peeked at your pecker over there when you were draining the main vein. You know. Oh, you know what just happened? <laughs> What's that? Boner. Original, original taco just arrived, so I did just get a boner. Oh, you know, seriously. I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to eat better and everything like that, so I can't even smell original taco or I'll get fatter again. But Well, Christian just called me, and I'm like, uh, I didn't eat dinner, which I do a lot, and she was like, oh, you want to be – and it's called, okay, when we like eat fast food, it's called being bad. So, like, it's like, oh, you want to be bad? I'm like, yeah, and it's not like – it's not like we're gonna fuck. It's like we're yeah, gonna like eat bad. food yeah, and just like bad. sit and like let our bellies roll out. We've been doing the same thing too, Tim. Now that we've been, you know, eating better and everything, it's uh, you know, the, the kids will go and we'll stop and get them Happy Meals or whatever, and we'll go over to like Subway and grab something, or we'll wait until we get home, you know. And at first it was kind of hard, but now it's actually getting a lot easier to do that, you know, especially because I'm seeing some good results, you know, with what hey, we're doing. Like I was telling you guys. So speaking <laughs> speaking of getting hard, if you guys keep talking about your relationship, my dick's gonna crawl inside of me. <laughs> Sean, so sad and lonely. All right, well, let's next topic: Dennis Rodman in North Korea. I just thought that was really an interesting title. I have no idea. Is that two that. separate things, or did he actually visit it? No, well, Dennis he, Rodman he visited Dennis, it, but wasn't yeah. that a couple months ago? Well, it was a couple Sean? months ago, but then he was gonna he was he was gonna go back. And I mean, this topic is a is a few weeks old, um, probably about three weeks old. You know, we're gonna do uh, overdose seven, not overdose seven point three. Um, you know, where Dennis Rodman went over there and apparently, uh, you know, whatever his name is, Dim Kong Cobb, whatever, whatever, I don't care if I fucking, you know, butcher yeah, his name because yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, he's, yeah, a yeah, bas- he's a huge basket. he's a huge basketball fan. And being Dennis Rodman, you know, he's like starstruck with it. So you know, Dennis Rodman's trying to play, you know, like the, the, the good guy over there and go Didn't over Rodman come to- back and say that say some shit like uh, like yeah, he was a cool kid or some shit like that. Yeah, you know, you know it was just Rodman like being Rodman. Yeah. Yeah, must, you know, why don't we just take Rodman and Tyson and send them both over there? So high right now. There's a fucking great image of fucking, well. you know, America. But I mean, hey, you know, he's a big he's a big NBA fan, and you know, if I guess if Rodman can go over there and make any kind of impact, so be it. You know, <laughs> seriously, I'm not I'm not gonna fucking go over there and make any impact. I guarantee you. Build the fucking army, shoot me in about ten seconds. Yeah, I was gonna say, if anything, you'll go over there and you'll incite World War Three. Yeah, fuck, so. Fucking. Three, four, five. Jesus Christ! You know, <laughs> fucking call, call of Duty with their games couldn't keep up with the wars I'm about to fucking ensue. <laughs> what was that? What? I don't know what's going on here, guys. Testing what did I you. miss? I'm, I'm like, what I'm happened? intermittently muting my shit because. Uh, <laughs> I'll say for the viewers, Surf Wife just came home and is taking Surf Son upstairs. To bed, and so he's like doing the protesting. Was like, no, no, Daddy, let me stay up forever. Now I'm overtired. So I was doing some surf tacos and take some surf dumps. Yeah, actually, I do got some tacos here and a horchata, which I'm gonna eat promptly in front horchata. of horchata. As soon as my my wife returns hey, uh, with the bag hey, of food, hey, which hey, is hey, over hey, there. Hey, it's surf. What? Another question. Um, I'm not no. sure if you asked the question, surf, but what half of the mermaid did you choose? Oh, did you guys ask that question earlier? No, that just came, that came up. No, uh, I, probably, I think it was in the past, quite some time ago. We talked about that, or someone did. I know I, I know I heard mm. it somewhere. I don't remember where. It's hard to say because I really like a good blowjob, and I like some titties. You know, I like to titty fuck, but I also like ass. And the 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 nice ass part about if I if I had a if I had a, a human from the waist down. And they're like a fish in the top half. I'm assuming they can't talk, so that would be my real prerogative. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you didn't have they'll, to they'll ever like fucking put listen. their head back and try to bite you. Oh man, she if if she <laughs> she's just punching him. If she can't, it's like a donkey punch. Bam! Consistently donkey punch. Man. I would probably take the top half, but I mean, I don't know. Like in the bottom half, does she have like a dorsal fin hole or something? I can stick it in. I mean, because no, that'd you're be. Not, fine. You're not sticking in anything, man. I think we need Jim to draw a picture of the other kind of mer whatever. Okay, so here's my thing. I I suspect, I suspect that if you took a top half mermaid, she's got to have a hole where shit comes out, like an anus, so you can do anal all the time on on the fish part. 
So I would take mm-hmm. the top. Yeah, but it's thing. it's. I guess I guess that's good because it's slimy and wet already. You don't have to fucking throw on some fucking KY. <laughs> oh, exactly. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, but you get a lot of chafing from the scales and everything. Story time. Story time. Like story time. Story, story time. time. Story time. <laughs> I just, I, I just have to bring this up, and I want, I want to talk about this. So, fuck this sweaty girl. Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. So sweaty. No, so, so we need to come up with a good effect that we can use that does that. You know, for story time, we'll pop some, pop something up or something on there. You so, know, like an alarm going off. Story time, motherfucker. So, so a week ago, okay, I'm, I'm at uh, Jewel, um, you know, buying beer and other stuff. And I go down the aisle. It's like it's like it's their dollar aisle, okay? Fine beer and other stuff. It's like different flavors of beer. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I literally beer and water. That's all you'll see in Sean's fridge. It's the strangest thing. You open More it, completely it. empty. Beer Fucking and water. I'm not kidding. Lime, Keeping up okay, kidding, I'm not kidding. Don't, don't forget the Diet Mountain Dew. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Continue. So I, I go into the dollar in the dollar aisle. I just I, I don't know why I, t- I I turn there and I'm like, oh cool band aids. I can use band aids at home. My kids, you know, always seem to beat the crap out of each other and hurt themselves. I can always use Band-Aids. So as I'm walking, I'm like, wow, Magisil for a dollar? I'm like, yeah, if you're itchy down there, you should come to the dollar store. And then I see a dollar pregnancy test. Really, if, if, if that's all you can afford to take a pregnancy test, you probably shouldn't have sex and have kids. Seriously. No. <laughs> I mean, that's just my opinion. But it was just, nonsense. A dollar. <laughs> a fucking dollar for pregnancy. You know, I can take the pregnancy test. It's going to tell me I'm pregnant. Seriously. If you're buying a dollar pregnancy test, give me your buck. I'll tell you you're pregnant, bitch. Well, that's the thing. Like, I can just let me stick my dick in you. I'll tell you right away. But um, what if that's how it worked? There was, like, a specialist. What if that was a special? Oh, wouldn't that? That's, like, a great. That's a great. <laughs> probably not a great movie idea, but I'm thinking it's a great movie idea. What if, like, one out of every 300 people had the ability to tell if one was pregnant? And it was the only way to tell. And they had to do it by sticking their dick in them. That'd be a fucking great job. I think they do that in Africa right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they spread AIDS and malaria. Yeah, but so like you know, we, current or future African viewers, we're sorry. For that <laughs> when Jamie and I went to the, the pregnancy test or whatever, um, this is actually before we found out about. Well, obviously, it's before we found out about Brad, but it's before before that. It was a different incident, <laughs> and so. We went and got the pregnancy test, and it was like, should we get the $15 one or the $20 one? We're like, fuck it, let's spend the extra five bucks and like be ultra sure. And it, it turned out it was fine. In fact, when I found out about Brad, I was helping uh, Jim move out of his house in Michigan, and I was I was oh, at I remember the, that yeah. I was at the gas station checking out, so I had like the phone to my ear. I'm like, yeah, honey, what's going on? She's like, all quiet. She's like, can I tell you something? And I'm like, yeah, what's what's going on, hon? You know, just checking out here. And she's like, oh, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, w- wait, what? And I, like, sat down, I was like, I because I didn't think I heard her. I was like, what'd you say? She's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, I just like set my ho-ho down and I was just like. Whose is it? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. But you know what's weird is like from that moment, like people talk about, well, let's ask, I mean, Tim's the only one who has it, but let's ask Sean and Jim. Um, <laughs> I, every, I think there's a lot of preconceived notions about like people's reactions to, to having kids. And at least for me, like I wasn't financially prepared whatsoever to have a kid. Um, but I wasn't scared. I'm still not. And I have three. No, I, I was, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. But I didn't have that typical portrayed in the movies where the guy's like, what? This is unacceptable. Like, uh, that didn't happen for me. I was like, all right. Like, James was nervous. I was like, it's going to be all right. We're going to work through it. It's going to be great. It's going to be fucking awesome. And even though, like, I didn't feel awesome at the time, like, I just kept a positive attitude. And it was, honestly, I think it made it a lot better. But I don't know. How did you guys feel when you got news for, of your first children? Well, with our... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Jim. Okay. <laughs> with, with, with our first, uh, it, it actually worked out quite conveniently because uh, I had just proposed uh, to, to my now wife um, just a few days prior. So it was one of those things where we truly felt like, I mean, we had we were already in love. We were getting married uh, before, you know, we, we found out that we were having a child. So it wasn't as if we got married just because of that, as many people do. And uh, we, you know, we went and got the the test, and she came out of the bathroom, and she said, you know, it's we had a few people over. Um, we were younger at the time; I think I was twenty one, and she was twenty. Um, and uh, she she came out of the bathroom and said, you know, can can I talk to you for a minute? 
Yeah, and then I got a couple of buddies over. We had a few beers. I'm like, yeah, sure. What, what do you want to talk about? And she's like, no, could I? Could I? And she's my, my and if anybody doesn't know my wife, she's very reserved and quiet anyway, you know, and she's not a person who will come out and say anything. Word. Yeah, she'll not come out and say things, you know, that are embarrassing or private in front of other people. She's not comfortable. Whereas me, I'll talk about whatever, you know, to anybody. I don't care. And uh, so, and I'm just like, and plus I had a couple of beers, you know, I might have been a little bit stoned even. And uh, and I was just like, <laughs> you know, I was just like, well, you can say whatever you want. It's cool, you know. And she's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. I, I went, or she goes, she goes, I went and uh, took that pregnancy test. That's what I was doing in the bathroom. So and everyone I, in the room is like, oh. So, so I turn around and look at her and I go, so what, you're fucking pregnant? <laughs> just like that, right? And she looks at me real serious and she goes, well, yeah. You know, <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, you know, and I, it, my heart initially kind of dropped because, again, I, I you know, financially, emotionally, uh, maturity, I, I wasn't really prepared. Um, for, for that, it, we weren't exactly planning it right then, but within a couple of seconds, you know, I kind of regained my composure and everything. The couple of buddies that were over quietly excused themselves after a few minutes, you know, because obviously, we, you know, we had some talking and doing everything else. And then it wound up being, you know, kind of a funny thing because we were talking, we were excited to call up parents and everything else. And, uh, you know, I called up, called up my parents and, and they were happy. Uh, she, uh, my wife, her parents are, are divorced and have been for some time. And she calls up her dad and the first words out of her dad's mouth are, oh, oh, wh 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 what did you do? Or some, something to that effect, you know? So she's on the phone and I can't hear, you know, what, what he said, but all of a sudden her face gets all pale and she kind of starts tearing up, you know, and she tells me, she puts her hand over and says what he said, you know, and, and I was pissed. So then the adrenaline got flown and I got on the phone and uh, it called him several, several different expletives. <laughs> and, um, you know, it ended up with me, you know, threatening probably his life or, or whatever, you know, and, um, you know, but, but I was all charged up after that, you know, but, but overall, I think it was, it was, it was a pretty good experience. I think there was though about that minute or two, you know, once we, once we did find out where it was kind of like, whoa, really, you know, <laughs> like there was sort of that shock and all of a sudden everything hits you all at once, you know, and it's like, you're thinking about what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? You know, cause it's not about you anymore. And, and that sort of thing. So, but uh, and, wait, and while we have the spot, and while we have the spotlight on you, top half or bottom half? Um, I, I would go with top half. I I, I like uh, I like some some titties, you know, and I like some titty <laughs> fucking, and um, you know, because I, especially after my wife is breastfed with all three kids, you know, so it's nice, man. After she has the baby, you know, they just get gigantic, and, and that's the favorite thing to do <laughs> while she's uh, healing up down there, and she's gonna kill me when she watches this episode later on. Um, but that's all right. So. Hey, there's another wrong little titty fucking. Um, exactly. you know, so all right, Sean. <laughs> now, top, now my, my, top half or bottom half, and also your story of well, children. Do you want me to? Do, I'll do the top half or bottom half at the end. But my story is a little more romantic. You know, I, I can't be romantic at times. So um, hey, I got to hear this. Yeah, uh -huh. this is gonna be right at once. It's horrible. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking absolutely fucking a train wreck. Um, so, um, me and my ex-wife, who I do have two kids with. Um, you know, we dated for about a year and a half. Um, all of a sudden, you know, I started hitting my stride with the ladies, so I was basically cheating on her, so I broke up with her. And, uh, you know, we were doing our own thing, and we were still hanging out and, you know, doing our friends with benefits kind of thing. Mm, so, friends um, fuck. Yeah, exactly. So we were doing that, and, uh, you know, I was uh, having a good time with uh, a couple other ladies that I currently worked with at the time, and uh, we... Uh, you know, she calls me and, you know, she's like, hey, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, well, congratulations. Who the fuck's is it? It ain't mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know. I thought you were being genuine about it being a little more romantic. You yeah. Uh -huh. I don't think I know what romance is, seriously. So, I thought you, you actually know, had a semi-touching story. You know, no, I mean, so. one day one day I'll hit you guys with a surprise story. And uh, so, you know, I mean, like, she was doing her thing. I was doing my thing. And it was like, you know, it's like, well, is it really mine? And, you know, we went on for you know, for months, and, you know, she told me she was pregnant, and I'm like, you know, whatever, and I was still, you know, doing my thing, and she kind of came over one day, and I was kind of in the basement with another girl, and she peeked in the window and saw stuff she shouldn't have saw, and led to an ugly situation, and, you know, one thing that I have for me is I'm very good at lying, so I was able to convince her that nothing was going on, when it really was, so, you know, we went on for nine months, and, uh, you know, I we had just, I just happened to trip and fall and stick my dick in her arm, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my dick fell in her mouth. <laughs> we were <laughs> repeatedly. That's so. Sometimes that's what happens when you teabag somebody. I mean, a bee, a bee stung me right in my dick, and she was sucking out the poison. Is what it was. She was helping science <laughs> stinger with her tongue. So. Exactly. So I mean, you know, we, we we go ahead and you know we have the kid, and you know, 
and for a long time, I'm like, you know, doubted it was even mine. And, uh, you know, we, you know, he was two year, two weeks old. We ended up getting married and, um, you know, and, you know, by far now, I mean, I never had to take a paternity test or anything, but there's no doubt. And Surf avowed for that 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 kid is mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, that, sh that shit's fucking, it couldn't be any more clear. <laughs> personality or looks wise? Both. Oh, personality wise, yeah. He's like he's like a hitman, or no? He pays hitmen. <laughs> yeah, my son's my son's a little badass, you know. I don't know if you want to talk about. It. I didn't want to share it if you didn't want to talk about uh, it. Though. So yeah, you know, I would, we'll, we'll jump into that too, since my story didn't get really romantic like uh, Jim <laughs> was hoping for. So you know, it's like uh, I'm gonna say maybe about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I get a call on my cell phone. I'm at work, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, uh, Mr. Shank, we need you to come in, and <laughs> we need you, we need you to come in. Um, you know, your son." Your son Luke's in trouble, and I'm like, okay. So I'm 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 driving down there, and I'm I call my ex-wife, and I'm like, what's going on? She's like, I don't know. I have to go in there too. And you know, we you know, I get in there. I'm like, hi, my name's Sean. I'm here because my son Luke's in trouble. Okay, come on in here. So my ex-wife's already in there. We're sitting in the office, and you know, my son's sitting there on one side of the table. We're sitting on another side of the table, and then we have a principal and the cop on the opposite side of the table. What the fuck? What the <laughs> is, just, is that is that your TV? I it, think that's. Hey. I think that's yellow bust. Oh, sorry. He has, he, what are you hearing? He's just fucking grooming himself. I think I can hear Christy. <laughs> yeah, she's home. So, so uh, bitch, be quiet. I'm just <laughs> so, you know, I, we get in there, like I said, there, you know, there's me, and my ex-wife, and there's the principal, and uh, there's a principal and a a cop, and then there's my son, and you know, they're like, okay, let him tell you what happened. So my son's like, okay, so I just want you to know that I paid whatever the kid's name was, Pablo, PD, whatever his name is, I paid PD 20 bucks to beat up this one guy. This one guy. And we're like, well, why'd you, you pay him? You know, and my son gets into some elaborate story because apparently he's learned how to lie from me. And uh, you know, so-and-so, he, he gets suspended. So, you know, we get him home. We're like, you know, I get him. And I'm like, what really happened? He's like, well, I like this one girl. And this other guy uh, was dating her. So I paid this guy $20 to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I think that's Love fucking that. brilliant. Stubborn. Oh. So that's my that's my my I'm son's like, that's my son's romantic love story. Sorry for my lack of response. I was busy typing and I can't do too many things at once. It's understandable. You know, no, um, I worked with you for a while. I understand that. But uh, yeah, dude. I just think I just when I heard that story, it made me laugh so hard because it just. I don't know. It seems like a very strong thing. <laughs> it is. I mean, even even I never got. I didn't. Get, I didn't start getting in that much trouble till I was. Uh, what is it? In sixth grade. Wait, sixth grade. I got in trouble. I got suspended for calling a teacher a fucking bitch. Uh, in seventh grade, I got suspended for. I was walking down the hall, and one of my buddies was like, "Hey, where's Mr. Johnson?" I says, "Probably in the in his office, jacking off, jacking off." And that didn't, <laughs> <laughs> little did I know, he was right behind me. And I ended up getting suspended for that too. Uh, lucky I never got expelled. After that, I kind of toned it down. I made it through the eighth grade without getting expelled. But I was on that list. If I got suspended one more time, I was going to be expelled in uh, junior high. So, dude, that's funny. As, that's funny as fuck. It's just, it's just funny because for people who don't know Sean, which is pretty, pretty much all of our viewers, you spend a few minutes with them and like, okay, here, here's a little, a little instance of that. Uh, with, with uh, Jim. Sean and myself were just uh, were just together. What was it last week? Two weeks ago, getting some drinks. And, yeah, it was two uh, weeks ago. And we're sitting outside, like eating some tacos, having some beers, and like these three like belligerently drunk. It's like seven o'clock, seven or eight o'clock at night, and these guys have been like clearly hammered for days. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, for anyone who's been to a bar or, or has drank, knows that like your volume just gets progressively louder and louder. So these guys like. Out of the thirty tables out there, choose the table right next to us. There's no one else out there, and proceed to have the loudest conversation I've ever heard in my life. And it was just funny because the entire time Sean was making comments like loud enough for them to hear, like with the intent for them to hear. And it's so funny because that type of thing used to make me uncomfortable, but it doesn't anymore. And it's just so funny to see you do it in retail with customers, you know. And it's just the funniest shit. Well, you know, it's, with me, it's like, you know, some people I get away with it. You know, the people that shop and know me, you know, just like, yeah, you know, he's just a smart ass. He's just trying to enjoy his job and making fun. It's not, it's not like I ever go up to someone at work and say, you know, you're a fucking bitch. 
you know, if I did, then you know what? I deserve to be fired. You deserve to complain. It's like I'm sitting here deliberately being a dick. It's the fact that I'm sarcastic, and that's the way I am. If you don't fucking like it, go shop down the street, bitch. I don't give a shit. I don't need your $3.33 for your fucking yarn anyways. Sorry for what? Exactly. Sorry for what? Sorry, I'm not going to... Oh, you know, I got another story I'm going to tell you. You know, while did you, wait, did you choose top half, bottom half? I did not choose top half, bottom half, but I would do the same. I do top half. You know what? I, you know, I'll go with a good blowjob. Seriously, good blowjob, some titty fucking, you know. I, that's something I'm going to have to look at all the time. The pussy, I'm not going to look at all the time. You know, it's not right. going to sit Plus, there 24-7 and just there's, be like... There's definitely some some marine anal out there. There's got to be. I don't care she's about the marine She's got to have some anal. kind of blowhole. Yeah. Seriously, she's, she's got to have, have some good lips where she can fucking, you know, suck the fucking chrome off a garden hose, man. I swear to God. <laughs> she's underwater, man. She's got to go, go, go. So another story, I, you know, this happens to me a lot at, at, at work, and um, every time I, I work, I go to, and work in the framing department. Um, I always get like these older ladies. So I had this gaggle. I'm gonna call them a gaggle of of older ladies. A um, gaggle like, of geezers. Well, there, there was a yeah, gaggle of geezers. There's three of them to start with, okay? And I'm helping them set up their frame and stuff. And you know, I don't pay attention to what you know to what people say and do. But I have another uh, one of my framers who, who works there that is always yeah, there every time. Every time I'm sexually harassed by old people, you know, and it's like, um, you know, I'm sitting there helping them, and apparently I, I turn around, and one of the old ladies is checking out my ass, and, uh, you know, I walk Fuck away, that. and I walk away, and uh, one of the old ladies is like, well, if he's a framer, we're going to come here more often, and winks to our friends, and then, you know, so I'm helping three ladies, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes this other old lady. I don't know if it was like some kind of, uh, you know, walker convention, but, you know. <laughs> it's like a chain gang of old people. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, people hate me, but the old ladies love me. I don't know why. I think it's because they're partially blind and can't hear, so they don't know what the hell's going on. And it's the, the stubble no tickles shame. their clit. They have oh, no yeah. shame, too. True. Yeah. I think at some point you just get to the fuck it level. You know... You know what I often wonder, thinking, speaking of that fuck it level that you get to when you're really old? The people who are already like fuck it now, who have no discretion towards anything, what are they like when they get old? Like, they gotta be fucking crazy. Either that They'll or that, like, it goes back the other way. They probably do all die young. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, even with our, our uh, father, Surf, he's kind of pussified as he's gotten older. You know what I mean? He was yeah. the person that was always like, I don't give a fuck, you look at me wrong, and I'll kill you type of thing. Take the pain, shit for brains, walk it off. I mean, this motherfucker, like, literally like had uh, like, a, like a ripped tendon or something in his knee and was, like, walking around the block, and our, our mother caught him, like, trying to walk it off, right? And that's the type <laughs> of person he always was. And now uh, he's, his health has deteriorated uh, from smoking for 40 or 50 years or whatever. He has emphysema. And, and now he's not like that. You know, he's very reserved and calm. He doesn't fly off the handles easily. He's more like just kind of like a meek, timid person. So it's kind of happened in the reverse, you know, the reverse effect. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I was, was wondering. Younger, he was that's always a good kind example. Of the, I don't give a fuck. You know, so I think that's a, a decent example, I guess, <laughs> you know, that we can, that we can he take. He hit it in reverse. So. He hit it in reverse. <laughs> Oh, good lord! Hey, so we've got we've got three top halves. Oh, oh, yellow bus is gone. He's probably smacking his bitch around. Probably we all got <laughs> you all gotta smack a bitch around once in a while. That's why I'm single. Well, why don't we ch why don't we choose? What are we at here? Ah! There oh, he is. You're back. He's back. Okay, how's this? Yellow bus. So, top half, so, so, so. top half, or bottom half, and then pick our next topic. Uh, this is the mermaid thing still? Yeah. No, this is a bear. We're, we're at a bear right now, yellow us. <laughs> a man, bear, pig. I'll take half man, half bear, half pig. Too bad that's my answer. You can't have that one. <laughs> I mean, when it comes down to it, like, you need to have some kind of humanoid, so I have to take top. <laughs> I, I, uh, that's what, that, that was my choice, I think, too. I, I would, I would, I would, be, I would live forever if, uh, if it was a fish head trying to bite my thing off. <laughs> That's what my question is, is who's ever seen a top half of a mermaid? What does that look like? 
I'm assuming it's like a dolphin face. Isn't the mermaid by default, by definition, top half human? It's like a centaur. Like you can't have a centaur in reverse, right? If you it's did, a it's called minotaur. It's a, a minotaur. minotaur. But it's a whole different species then. So like, what's the opposite of a, a mermaid then? Hmm. I, I don't even know if we're, if we're phrasing the question right because I remember hearing this discussion <laughs> somewhere, but I think it's would you rather have the top half of a mermaid or the bottom half of a, and I think it's some other type of mythical creature that would have a, a nicer bottom half, but it's like a monstrous top half. I, I, I think, just can't imagine any creature that has a beautiful bottom half and a monstrous <laughs> top half. Well, I, I, nothing, nothing comes to mind right now, but I'm just okay. saying, I, I just, I, for some reason, I think that we're. Uh, that, that we're thinking of, about that question a little bit. Backwards. All right, since we're talking about mythological creatures, let's talk about let's talk about this subject. Actually, no, Tim, you picked the subject. Stick to the subject. Is legalizing prostitution a good idea? Probably. If it would if it would save me money, yes. Next What's topic. That? I I think anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think ultimately anything, you know, when you come to like legalizing marijuana, prostitution, I mean, the shit's going on anyway, okay? And I mean, the only thing that legalizing it would do would allow the government to tax it. So, and regulate it. Right. And, and, well, and, and regulate it, but, you know, ultimately, you know, I mean, it, 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 prostitution, as far as I know, is legal in certain areas in Nevada. Um, and it's. Uh, so, so, I mean, just like with gambling, you know, I mean, it used to be gambling was only like in Vegas and Atlantic City, and now it's like, you know, any 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 riverboat that you can find or anything that, you know, uh, somebody with one-eighth, you know, Indian heritage, you know, wound up getting some land <laughs> from the government, and the government, you know, basically said, hey, you know, we know that we fucked your ancestors over and bought New York for a case of whiskey and then killed your fucking people, and you're the only one left of your, you know, tribe from hundreds of years ago. So here, take this couple of acres and we'll let you build a casino and, uh, you know, we'll even give you a loan, low interest to build it, you know, <laughs> so, but, uh, so, but, but now you can, you know, now that the government saw that they could make money off that, you see it everywhere, you know, uh, as far as gambling. So, I mean, well, what's, you see you know, like the difference, really? in places like Amsterdam where they, they've got a proven track record for a long time now with things like the red light district and whatever, like not only did it improve violence towards women and a lot of the things that, that unfortunately happen with human trafficking by regulating it, but it also made it a really respectful profession. In Amsterdam, um, women are, they get to select who they have sex with and what their rates are, and it's complete, like, they, they completely run their own show, and a lot of these women make um, a much better living than even, like, bankers and lawyers and doctors. So, I think it's interesting that in different cultures it's actually a respectful position Whereas here it's like you know. <laughs> well, and the terrible. funny thing is, is that well, and, and it's not even. And the funny thing is, is here is this respected uh, profession in other countries and whatnot. But I mean, realistically, what's the difference between that and like a promiscuous? bitch. I mean, woman, whatever you want to say. I mean, we all have known people like that. I mean, I knew a girl that uh, in high school, you know, she had big tits and she knew she had nice big tits. So as soon as she had two beers, she was like so hammered and was showing everybody her tits and was fucking around with everybody and anybody. And she was just an attention whore, you know. Um, but I mean, what's the difference between somebody who's doing that and not getting paid and somebody who's actually getting paid for it? You hey, Jimmy, you got a number? Can I get a number? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll text it to you after the thanks. show. <laughs> the other thing, too, that I, I read an article on this they talked about with, like, um, bec because I guess um, America, in, in relation to a lot of other countries, is pretty tight-lipped about sex and that sort of thing. It was actually, I was reading about it in, um, for NASA research. They're, they're, they're researching um, sending people to Mars, and the problem is that they have to be there for, like, a minimum of three years because of the orbits. And so one of the studies that they're trying to get funding for is like human relations, and, and they're trying to make a, like a, a, a suit where you can connect with your partner and have sex like zero gravity. And the problem that they're having getting funding is that in America it's still considered like a taboo thing, and, but it's like a physical human need. And what they're saying by studying these other countries that allow prostitution is that there's many less sexual crimes overall because people don't – grow into these frenzied fixations. It's sort of like preventative care. If you've got someone who wants to have sex but has no access to it, good chances are that he might develop compulsions or sexual tendencies that are unnatural and eventually develop into maybe a violent crime or, or you know, even something worse. 
Um, so I think that's an interesting point too. That if if there's a lot of people out there that just you know, hey, it's a human need, man. And if you're just unfortunate and super ugly or don't have social skills or a combination of those things, I mean, like in Sean's and and Jim's case, um, I'm just kidding. Uh, then it's like I hey, resemble you know, that remark. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was an interesting point, and in that it could be like it, almost like mental preventative care, you know. Everyone needs some sex, man. Other people. Hey, you know what? My, my my point is, you know, we're we're in such a deficit in this fucking country, you know, and you know we're gonna eventually get to the point where, I think I just read where May was like the most successful month in legalizing marijuana, and people haven't even realized it because it's been so under the radar because of everything else going on, you know, the yeah, yeah. hurricanes and all that other shit. I mean, let let you know, let the government tax it and fucking use the money to. Dig us out this deficit, so when I go over and visit uh, North Korea, we can support World War Three. Yeah, because I, cause, yeah, cause honestly, we're in such debt now that I don't even know if we could if we could sustain or support another war. Because eventually, people are just going to be like, uh, "Yeah, your IOUs are no good anymore." Okay, like your economy is crumbling. Um, <laughs> you absolutely are just not a forward-thinking superpower well, uh, anymore. You know? The U.S. <laughs> is about to lose the national reserve currency as a U.S. dollar, which is uh, going to change everything overnight. Really? See, and I wasn't yeah. aware of that. The, the national reserve currency switched from the British pound, I think, sometime in the 60s or 70s, and it was right around the time they had their economic collapse. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty certain now. Like, before it was a lot of speculation, but I've been reading a, a lot about it, and I've been reading widely about it. I haven't just been reading things from one or two guys. What what piqued my interest was this documentary called Collapse, and it kind of freaked my nut. And I, I've been it's reading really about good. it ever since, and I think the reality that we're facing is right now in America with our, our gross national product, the, the problem is our economy is designed for a paradigm of infinite growth. And I, I think I've talked to each one of you guys about this, but, you know, for our viewers, I'll re-explain and the problem with the paradigm for infinite growth is that there's no natural governing laws in the universe that we know of that allow something to infinitely grow. Eventually it must taper off and then eventually come down. And uh, the problem that we're facing now is we can't raise the GNP any higher. Higher. This, the ceiling was pro probably happened 10 or 15 years ago, and now we've just basically found ways to conflagrate the problem with all of these you know, little things that we do in the economy. Which I, I won't I won't get into listing here, but I think it's it's interesting an entire theoretical concept such as this economy and something like fiat currency like the dollar bill is somehow destroying the goods and services that still exist independent of this this thought process. So it's weird. Like even though we're headed for imminent you know um, economic collapse, like the the same amount of good services and people will be available to do their jobs and their skills, but it w it won't happen because we're so fixated on the the almighty dollar. So I there, think we're headed for a collapse. I think it's going to happen. There will be no economic collapse as long as you vote. Shake twenty sixteen. We'll be fine. <laughs> Shake twenty sixteen. What would your platform be? Take... Okay, here's here's a good question for every one of us. Let's start with you, Shank. What would be what would be your platform? What would be your slogan to 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 petition for president. Here. I'm not a politician. I'm a person. Okay. Uh, Latuzak, what would yours be? We're going to stop swinging the big American dick in other people's countries, and we're going to look to uh, our own, you know, as far as, as far as, you know, feeding our own, clothing our own, um, and, you know, and, and we're not going to spend billions getting in further debt uh, to go and show other people that, that we're the biggest and the baddest. You know, let let uh, let other nations help. Uh, you know the <laughs> the ailing nations of the world. So you know what's funny? I wouldn't even refine that. I'd put that whole entire fucking paragraph as your slogan, like on. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's fine. I will. Yeah, I didn't have anything to condense it down over here. So oh, oh that's fine. What about you, Yellow Bus? <laughs> Fuck obesity. All right. Mine would be put, putting, the <laughs> putting the United back in the United States. I would just combat uh, people that are lazy and suck and fat. I like wonder how different politics seven. would be if someone just came to the table and was like, hey, listen, let's lay the shit bare. Let's have an honest conversation. Like, I wonder what that would be like if they're like, all right, let's start with Roswell and just go from there. <laughs> like, has, uh, has anybody here ever seen the movie Idiocracy? I've yes, heard about it, and I good. heard it's really great. So that's, that, oh, that's, that's the one with what's-his-name, right? 
Uh, where he talks Luke about, Wilson, yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the Wilson. one for the, the creator of Beavis and Butthead. It was a, yeah, a, a Mike Judge film, and um, it you know takes place in the future, and it's basically what we're heading towards anyway. And what it is is celebrities uh, have now become, like, for instance, um, the, the, the big black guy that does the old Spice commercials, and he's in the Expendables, uh, Terry Crews. Uh, he, he's actually the president of the United States in the future, and uh, he's actually, his name is Macho Camacho something or whatever. He was actually an ex-wrestler because in the future, it's it, things have degraded to the point where we elect people based on just their popularity in, in, in culture, right? <laughs> and, uh, and and because of, like, um, all the different things that we've done as far as, like, uh, fabricating things like Gatorades and drinks and things like that, we pretty much, like, have destroyed all the soil and cannot grow, like, new food anymore and pretty much just have to sustain ourselves off of all the, like, Nutra-Sweet type, like, just garbage crap that we make, right? <laughs> and, uh, and and it's funny because you walk into a Costco and a Costco is like it's like a football field. It's like fucking hundreds of yards wide, and you can buy anything you want there. And when you walk in, like the greeters say, "Welcome to Costco. I love you," and they hug you. <laughs> it's like you have to like take a train to get to different parts of Costco because it's just showing how like in the future like things are just going to get out of control. That like the Walmart that became the Super Walmart is now just like you can go for anything that you need. You want to yeah. adopt a kid, you can go to one area of the Costco for that. You know what I mean? And it's actually a really funny movie too. Um, but it's so funny because that that's that's where we're headed. You know what I mean? And I think it takes place 50 or 100 years in the future. And I mean, it's it's really funny because it just in the 10 years since the movie's been made, we've we've taken so many steps in the direction of, of where this is at. And it's meant oh, to be yeah. comedy. And I mean, an off the wall comedy. And but you can see many of these things in their infancy right now. You know what I mean? I would, I would, I wish I could live to see like us terraform Mars. You know, I think they say like if we started terraforming Mars today, it would take like a hundred years to to get it to where we need to be inhabitable. But uh, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Like once once we start populating other uh, other planets in, in our solar system, I think that'll be a really interesting time. I think we should in twenty sixteen. Did you just change your name, Shank? Twenty sixteen. Vote Shank. <laughs> Sh 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 shank. I've got three tacos waiting for me and a crying baby, and so I'm debating. I'm debating stopping. But well, I got an idea. I got an idea. Why don't you take the tacos, shove it in the baby's mouth? You'll solve two problems with one. <laughs> but but I want the taco. Uh, I boom! Want the it's parenting right there. Hey, who, I'll wait. I'll wait till till Surfwave comes back. Who doesn't uh, want a taco? Who's who's got our next topic? I think. Uh, I don't know if I have another topic, but I think I might tell that story time that I was story time. To or story, time. story time. So uh, for for those of you uh, who who don't know, uh, so I guess for for our viewers, I used to work at uh, Toys R Us uh, back uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and I worked on the night crew uh, for a, a period of time. And at any rate, um, we used to do different things to fuck with the daytime employees and just customers in general, um, just because it, it was fun. You know, we would fuck with the Hot Wheels collectors because they were these guys that would come in and, and there's uh, they would try to pay you to go and open up the boxes of Hot Wheels because there would be uh, rare ones that were worth literally hundreds or thousands of dollars, you know. And um, then there was these these model enthusiasts, and the model enthusiasts were a group of generally kind of older, stuffier people, kind of like the the Michaels crowd, I guess, you know. And a lot of them were retirees, <laughs> and they were very picky. And these were the type of people that would go and they would buy a ten dollar model, and they would go and try to return it open box, like mostly put together because like one piece they didn't like the way it was scuffed or whatever, right? They they were just a very picky crowd. So at any rate, uh, we had a shrink wrap machine there, so you could open anything up and then just close it back up and shrink wrap it. And one night, uh, me and um, a another employee, we were working together uh, on, a on a night crew, an impromptu summer night crew, which was really fucking up our plans of hanging out in the summertime and whatnot. And we were kind of slap happy. We had worked back-to-back uh, -back shifts, and I think we're on about four 14 or 15 hours straight, you know. And we were rearranging everything and uh, doing a new plan, planogram that we had to follow for the model aisle. And at any rate, uh, we had to, whenever model boxes were open up, you'd have to go and check, make sure everything was still in there. And then we'd go re you know, shrink wrap and put them back on there. And uh, my, this guy, Bob, that I work with, he's laughing. We're slap happy. It's about four in the morning. He goes, you know, it'd be funny as hell if we just took a shit in a model box. 
and then wrapped it back up, you know, shrink, shrink wrapped it. And I said, what are you talking about? Take a shit in a model box. And he goes, yeah, think about it. He goes, there's this older crowd. What did everybody leave? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Seriously. <laughs> this is terrible. So, well, whatever. That's it. It's fine. I'm you, listening. You'll right. stick around and listen. So we're slap happy, and you know how it is when you're when you're slap happy. A lot of times we would uh, we we would you know have a couple of drinks too on night crew because we were locked in there. You know we bring a little flask with us or something. So I don't know what oh, the yeah. exact circumstances okay. were, but I know that uh, we were laughing about it. And I said, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. And this guy Bob that I work with, his uh, now wife um, at the time was his girlfriend. She worked up and was the head of customer service. So the reason we were going to do this is take a shit in a model box, close it back up, and shrink wrap it. Is because can you imagine that story? Somebody goes and buys this ten dollar model of a Corvette, goes home, opens it up, and there's a dried pile of shit <laughs> on top of their pieces of the model in the box. Was and awesome. the box was unopened, it was shrink wrapped. So I mean, could you imagine as the customer service person working at a place, somebody comes in, probably an elderly person, I mean, is just fuming mad with a receipt <laughs> and a pile of shit in a model box, right? That's too so awesome. So we did it, man. So I went and uh, I, I I laid I laid one in there, and uh, we we shrink wrapped. It was a '67 Corvette. And uh, we wound up, uh, it was red, cherry red, and uh, we wound up taking and uh, uh, shrink, shrink wrapping it that. back up and whatnot. And the funny part is about the whole shit in the model box thing and then shrink wrapping and putting it back on the shelf. Is that, this was, uh, this, this fucker wound up selling, I think, about a week later. You know, it was, it was within days, it was gone. And we thought it was going to be comical because we thought it would come back around through this co-worker of mine, Bob, who was on Night Crew, his wife, we figured, you know, that would be the story going around about, can you believe this person that tried to come in and tell us that he found a pile of shit in a model box that was sealed, you know? And what pissed me off about the whole ordeal is that we never we never heard that story circulate. And of course, you can't go and ask anybody about it, you know? <laughs> so, you get any funny stories about, you know, shit in a model box today? <laughs> I mean, it's not something that's kind of an off topic, so... Uh, we were really hoping for a, uh, a different outcome from that one. But I think what happened is somebody bought it, they got home, they opened that thing up, and they were just so just completely disgusted <laughs> and utterly flabbergasted. There was a dried right. pile of shit in their bottle box and that it was shrink wrapped that they were just like, this could not be happening to me. Uh, I'm just going to fucking throw this out and move on. Oh, Dude, oh I wonder if they that. went straight to the manufacturer and it fucking ruined somebody's life. That could be, too, because that's actually a good point because of the way, you know, because we're shrink wrapping it back up. I mean, they may have thought that it was, you know, I mean, I don't know where these things are manufactured, but they may have thought that it was, you hear all kinds of different stuff on the news about shit that happens at the plant, you know, the bottling plant at this place or the whatever, the factory, you know, so maybe they went directly I back to... I found you know. glass in my candy bar. You're like, what? That's intense. <laughs> but I mean, can you imagine that? story though like seriously I, I still this day somebody's telling their kids and their relatives about how they once bought a model of a Corvette that had a dried pile of shit. I've always <laughs> wondered those sorts of things like if you could follow up and, and, and hear about that sort of shit that's funny as hell man. I've never done anything like that but I've uh I told you guys this story. Um, I'll tell it for our viewers. Uh, I, I was at a bar once and I was very drunk and uh, I decided to rip this poster off the wall and my drunk buddy beside me was like, "Hey, I'll I'll rip like the the beam of this stall like out of the wall." And so he rips it out, and we're right next to the kitchen. So like two cooks all of a sudden show up, and they're like, "What happened?" And I like panicked. I was like, "Some dude just ran in here and fucking broke this thing and ran out." They're like, "We're gonna get, we're gonna get the owner. Show us who he is." So I just randomly picked. I just picked the biggest douche looking guy at the bar, and I was like, "Yeah, it was oh that guy." God, and they awesome. fucking they went and kicked him out. I, I you know, and the thing was, I didn't I didn't feel about, bad about it then, and I feel a little bit bad about it now, but not really. <laughs> I remember that because that's when me, you, and Shank went out a couple weeks ago, and we were all talking about exchanging different stories and what have you. Because that's all oh, uh, right. right. I, mentioned he, that, he, yeah. I think you told that, and I think that led into me talking about uh, at that uh, at, the, at the old Lamplighters. It was. Uh, you know, it's a dive bar that that's out near in the area where we live, and until they renovated, used to walk into uh, the men's bathroom. I don't know how the women's bathroom looked, but you walked in the men's bathroom, and it was just this tiny little like six by six thing where there was like a sink, like a toilet, and like one of those stand up urinals, you know. And they were all on like opposite walls of each other, and so oftentimes you'd have two or three guys on a Friday or Saturday night in the bathroom. One's you know pissing in the toilet, one's pissing in the sink, the other one's in the urinal. And uh, me and, uh, and a friend of mine uh, at the time, uh, 
he was he was pissing in the sink and uh, I was pissing in the urinal and a couple of girls walked in because the the line for the girls washroom there was always like 20 or 30 people you know so two, gig, two giggling semi attractive girls one of them was actually pretty cute walks in and I mean and we, it was like two in the morning we were already like 10 12 shots deep and just really not coherent at all and this particular friend of mine uh, that I that I, I probably shouldn't name but I will his name is Mark Retzler <laughs> um, he went and uh, he was he was kind of one of those just ultra uber jock types, you know what I mean? And till this day, even though he's married and has a child, we still think he, that he may be gay. Um, but but at any rate, though, he was in the bathroom and you know pissing in the sink, and these girls come in giggling, and the one sits down and just sits down, pulls down her drawers, and starts pissing, you know. And uh, and he says, you know, this is, this is a men's bathroom, you know. And he's all drunk, and she says, oh yeah, we know, but there's a long line, this and that, and he said. Yeah, you better get the fuck out of here. Or I'm gonna have to piss all over you. <laughs> you know, and the one girl goes, "You're not gonna do that." He <laughs> and this and that, right? And she turns her back and this and that to him, you know. And he goes and directs his flow of urine from the sink that he's pissing into, all across the girl that has back turned to his back, and all over the girl who's sitting down in a <laughs> skirt in the summertime in a, in a tank top or a tube top, and I mean, starts pissing all over him. And I'm sitting there faced with my back to him, pissing in the urinal, and I'm just like fucking peeking back like you have got to be kidding me, you know. And this is like 10 years ago. This is before like, you know, camera cell phones with recording capabilities and all that stuff. But I mean, this would have been the greatest thing because you've never seen two two chicks get so fucking crazy. One of them started fighting. One's pulling her panties up. She's got piss all over. The other one's going, that's gross. She's trying to swing and hit him and everything else, you know. <laughs> He just goes and fucking stops pissing, finishes up pissing, zips up his pants, and he says, I fucking told you it's the men's bathroom. And he just walks right up. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, like, against the urinal, like, oh, God, I hope these two leave soon and don't try to pin this Golden one on me. Golden you know? showers. Trying to pretend like I didn't know them at all, you know. But uh, Joe's going for the tacos. After yeah, Robert's golden golden showers. No, the, ta the tacos are here. I, <laughs> I, I saw my bomb. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see me eyeballing that taco. Yeah. God, now I feel like I need to go get some food, too. Eyeballing that taco. All right, well, on, on, on that note about it. food and, and pissing on women, um, everyone out there, stay safe. Piss, piss on a woman and eat a taco. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys all next week. Ooh, peace. All right, guys. I uh, hope everyone had fun. Peace. Yep, 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 yep. Good night, everyone. Thank so, you so, 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 so.